For the past 150 years, Lyon College has offered exceptional educational opportunities for Arkansas students and launched outstanding careers right here in the natural state. From our outstanding academic reputation and competitive athletic programs to our beautiful campus and a vibrant small town community, Lyon College is dedicated to producing successful graduates who make a difference in our communities and our world. For more information about the Lyon College experience, visit lyon.edu. Lyon College, a better world starting in Arkansas. Hi, this is Tim Griffin, your Lieutenant Governor. You know, there's something really special about football in the South. On Friday nights, I'm a Magnolia Panther. My wife, she's a Camden Cardinal. We love football season because it's a special time with family and friends. As your Attorney General, I'll work to keep dangerous criminals off our streets so we can all focus on what matters most, our faith, our family, and our friends. I'm Tim Griffin, and I'm asking for your vote. Paid for by Tim Griffin for Attorney General. Welcome back to our Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. Time to check out Rex's Road to the Rock ranking, sponsored by Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield for Class 6A, which is mostly unchanged other than Greenwood moving up to number two after defeating Lake Hamilton, which slips to number five. Otherwise, Pulaski Academy is still number one, while Little Rock Catholic bumps up to number three, and Benton moves up to number four. In Class 5A, the rankings don't change at all from the previous week, as Robinson is still number one while Shiloh Christian remains number two. Mills is still number three while Little Rock Parkview holds steady at number four following its 40 to seven win over Texarkana while Camden Fairview is still number five after walloping to Queen 49 to zero. In class 4A, Arkadelphia is still number one while Malvern is still number two and Warren stays at number three. Harding Academy is still number four and Star City remains at number five. Some of the big games in this classification include Rick Rivercrest traveling over to God. Philadelphia travels to Ashdown in a big, big game in the 7-4A conference. Mina will also be looking to break a three-game skid when it travels south to Lafayette County. And we're joined now by the head coach of the Mina Bearcats, Craig Bentley. And coach, I know you guys were uh, rolling along pretty good there and then, man, ran into like a murderer's row with Arkadelphia, Nashville, Malvern. Uh, that that's a pretty tough. That would be pretty tough for I don't know for the, like the Dallas Cowboys to try to right, navigate. Yeah, it right. I mean, uh, talk about a gauntlet. You know, um, you know, coming out of that stretch, we knew that was going to be by far the toughest stretch of our our season. And we're a young team. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, you know, most recently in our most recent game, we started nine sophomores on both sides of the ball. So, you know, on, on top of you know playing those you know experienced top teams in the state, we're young and and learning every game. And, but I'm really proud of the, the progress our team made. Um, you know, like you said, we started out real hot. I mean, we were 3-1, and one, won some games that, you know, a lot of people probably didn't think, you know, we were going to come on the right side out of. And then, you know, kind of ran in that murderer's row. And, and after Arkadelphia, we, we kind of looked deep and, and, and tried to figure out, you know, hey, let's let's make a, make the best of this situation and figure out how we can get better every week. And we've done that. Well, and that actually leads me right into my next question, Coach. I was going to ask, uh, what have you – what have you kind of learned playing this top-notch competition that you need to get better on, and, and what has continued to work for the Bearcats? Well, I think, you know, discipline and execution for us. I think, you know, initially for us, you know, we're not going to out-athlete anybody. We're not going to outspeed anybody. Um, but we can be, you know, physical. We can be as strong as we can be, and we can play discipline football. So execution, preparation for us. You know, I think initially jumping in this league, uh, which isn't necessarily new for Mina, but it's new for a lot of our, our kids, um, I think that initial shock of, of kind of what you're seeing there as far as that speed and athleticism that you're going to see every every single night uh, was an eye-opener for us, and it further solidified the, the fact that we have to play extremely disciplined football, we have to play physical football, and we have to execute well uh, to give ourselves a chance to compete and be successful. I know you've got a great chance to get back on the winning side this week against Lafayette County, but they are very athletic. When you've scouted the Cougars, what jumped out to you on film? What's it going to take for Mina to get back on the uh, W column? Well, no doubt. I mean, very athletic team. Um, you know, looking at their skill kids, I mean, some very, very talented skill kids, I'd say, comparable to what even we've seen uh, with the likes of, you know, the, the Arkadelphia Malverns and Nashvilles. You know, they've given up some points, but they haven't had any problem scoring. 
defense. So it's you know they're they're definitely a dangerous football team, and, and like I said, we have to do all those things more. But you know we feel good. You know, if, you know it's a long trip for us. Um, we're excited we get to play it first of all because it's a non-conference game in the middle of our conference season, and uh, we had a couple of teams drop out of our conference, and so we're excited we get to play it. Um, but but we're we're confident that if we come out and and play physical football and, and, and execute that, that we're going to have a good chance to come out of the right side of things. But we also know that they're dangerous enough that if you don't, uh, they're going to make you pay. So uh, it should be a good football game Friday. That was Craig Bentley of MENA joining us on our Summit Utilities Center Point Energy Studio lines, previewing that non-conference matchup with Lafayette County. We're going to have to step away for another quick timeout, but when we come back, we'll check out Class 3A and 2A on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. In the communities we serve, we know your energy is best spent on the things you enjoy. That's why we're helping you save your energy with natural gas. With twice the efficiency of electrical appliances, save your energy for taco night. Or singing in the shower with faster water heater recovery. Even for cozier comfort with gas dryers and fireplaces. All while doing a little more to save the planet. So save your energy and money with natural gas. And if you already are, keep saving with Summit Utilities. Learn more at summitutilities.com slash benefits. Joe Klein here for Bet Saracen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. You bet it is, Joe, and football is in the air, which means Bet Saracen has everything you're looking for and more right there on your cell phone. Now everyone can get in the game and follow your favorite team. And that's right on the money. If putting down a little wager makes your favorite game a little more exciting, we'll go to the app stores and download Bet Saracen. We even got a demo video to show you how to play. Or well, find it at BetSaracen.com. The love of football defines fall weekends and in many homes, our families. But it's a demanding sport that can cause injury. That's why UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is on sidelines and in locker rooms for high schools and colleges across the state. Ready to care for athletes with clinics in Central and Northwest Arkansas. UAMS Health, official orthopedics and sports medicine provider for Razorback Athletics and future Razorbacks all over Arkansas. Learn more at UAMS.health team. Located in a beautiful, quiet part of Arkansas, Southern Arkansas University offers personalized tour visits, faculty, and staff who invest in student success and a caring campus community. SAU allows you to choose from over 100 degrees and four distinct colleges and the school graduate studies. SAU not only offers a broad range of academic programs, including unique offerings to the state and region, but the first university south of Little Rock to offer a doctoral degree through the College of Education. Start calling SAU your home today by applying at saumag.edu. Go Mule Riders! A lot of cities claim to be unique, but are they really? Were they the off-season playground for legends like Babe Ruth and Al Capone? Do they sell beer made from thermal spring water that comes straight from the ground below? Do any of these places have a street that has a gangster museum on one side of the road and a national park on the other? Let me go ahead and answer that for you. They don't, because none of them is Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's different here. Come see why. Simmons Bank, nominated by Forbes magazine as a top U.S. bank, takes great pride in investing in our friends and neighbors. For more than 100 years, we've worked to make our customers' dreams come true, earning trust with convenient and reliable financial tools, checking in savings accounts, home and consumer loans, small business loans, and low-rate credit cards. Wherever you are on your financial journey, we're there with you every step of the way. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. Arkansas State Parks are your passport to all kinds of adventures. And camping is just the beginning. Our parks can take you hiking, kayaking, mountain biking, fishing, and some of them can even take you back in time. Our 52 state parks offer fun, adventure, history, and so much more. So pick up your passport at any state park visitor center. Visit ArkansasStateParks.com and see where we can take you next.
back on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show, where now we'll look at the rankings in Class 3A, the top five in Rex's Road to the Rock rankings brought to you by Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield, is once again unchanged as Prescott is still number one after beating Homer, Louisiana by the score of 9-0. to zero. Number two, Ryzen survived its trip to arch-rival Fordyce with a 37-24 to 24 victory, while number three, Charleston beat Hackett 57 to zero. Boonville is still number four after topping Mansfield by the score of 35 to nothing, and Melbourne remains at number five after beating Perryville 58 to 20. Some of the big games in Class 3A this week include number three, Charleston, traveling to Boonville, while Lavaca will be on the road to Mansfield. Newport will visit Melbourne, while Prescott will host Smackover, and Junction City will host Class 2A Hampton. And we are joined now by the longtime and legendary head coach of the Junction City Dragons, David Carpenter, on our Summit Utility Centerpoint Energy Hotline. Well, I guess, Coach, uh, welcome back into, you know, coaching and all that kind of stuff at the end of the day uh what was it that uh, kept calling you back couldn't stay away from the head coach's whistle i guess i guess you know uh all several things uh led up and got it back in here to where i could get back in the coaching you know for for a little bit and, and uh just see what's going on you know i i'd been wanting to get back in you know after a couple of years out and uh i they just you know one, I wasn't going to be able to leave Junction, you know, because of grandkids and all those things. Didn't want to get too far away. And uh, then the opportunity arose where I could get back in. And, shoot, I said, yeah, I'll do it. Absolutely. That's- well, I know the coaching world is better off uh, with you back in it than than when you were gone, for sure. I know it's been a challenging season so far and everything. What do the Dragons need to do the most to kind of get this thing turned around? Well, the thing, you know, the the thing that uh, we we have to do, you know, we we make we're making a lot of mistakes. You know, we only have four seniors on the team, so that means you know there's a lot of young guys out there playing, and they're going to uh, make mistakes. You know, sophomores when you you know you start six of those guys, things are going to going to happen. You know, we don't have very many. You know, we had 22 kids out, and uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of young guys out playing, just, just you know, making uh, mental mistakes. And as the, you know, the thing that, that I'm so proud of with this bunch is they don't quit. You know, they, hey, they're getting beat. Uh, you know, we go over to Prescott, and they hand it to us pretty good. You know, great ball club over there, great to and stuff and you know the guys are still battling out there and you know we're scoring and going against them and and just playing and you know things like that make you proud of of the team because you know they continue to work and uh as long as they do that things are going to you know get better for them absolutely Uh, i know y'all have had some frustrating losses a one point setback to falk a two-point loss to smack over got hampton coming to junction city this week what's the biggest matchup coach and what's it going to take for the dragons to come out on top yeah, you know, the, the thing that we're, we are going to have to do is, uh, you know, eliminate those mistakes that we're making. You know, offense, you know, we're moving the ball and, and doing some things. We've got to get on in there and score once we get down into the red zone. And defense, you know, we we wouldn't think it by looking at some of the scores, but, you know, we're getting better as we go along over there on the defensive side, you know, against smack over. You know, they beat us 28-26. Well, we, we snap, we have a bad snap on a punt, give them the ball on the two. Boom, they do that. They had a scoop and score and then block a punt and score to beat us at the end of the ball game. So, you know, the defense is doing pretty good. It's, it's our special teams that we've got to get a lot of work done on. And that's what we've been, you know, hammering in on. Some outstanding comments there from the legend himself, David Carpenter, winner of no fewer than seven state championships at Junction City. We're going to go ahead and take our final time out, but when we return, we'll wrap things up with Class 2A rankings on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show.
Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas deliver reliable, affordable power to more than 60% of Arkansas, the field we call home. The 17 dedicated electrical cooperatives around the state manage over 75,000 miles of power lines, delivering power to more than half a million homes, farms, businesses, and of course, football fields, improving the lives of communities and their residents all across Arkansas. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, the power to play, the power to deliver. I'm Rex Nelson. Outside of the state's natural beauty, the thing that strikes me most as I travel Arkansas is the junk in yards and trash along the highways. In a place that markets itself as the natural state, we've too often been guilty of, at best, ignoring our natural treasures, at worst, polluting and littering them. Let's take pride in our state by keeping it litter-free. Visit Keep Arkansas Beautiful. Poultry is the leading agricultural industry in Arkansas, and the Poultry Federation is the voice to promote it. Did you know that the industry provides 170,000 jobs in our state? In fact, over 6,500 farms in Arkansas produce right. some type of poultry. And in 2020, the poultry industry provided $3.7 billion of the total agricultural cash receipts. From providing scholarships to protecting interest at the state capitol, the Poultry Federation is the proud voice of the poultry industry. In the communities we serve, we know your energy is best spent on the things you enjoy. That's why we're helping you save your energy with natural gas. With twice the efficiency of electrical appliances, save your energy for taco night. Or singing in the shower with faster water heater recovery. Even for cozier comfort with gas dryers and fireplaces. All while doing a little more to save the planet. So save your energy and money with natural gas. And if you already are, keep saving with Summit Utilities. Learn more at summitutilities.com slash benefits. Joe Klein here for Bet Saracen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. You bet it is, Joe, and football is in the air, which means Bet Saracen has everything you're looking for and more right there on your cell phone. Now everyone can get in the game and follow your favorite team. And that's right on the money. If putting down a little wager makes your favorite game a little more exciting, we'll go to the app stores and download Bet Saracen. We even got a demo video to show you how to play. Or well, find it at BetSaracen.com. Simmons Bank, nominated by Forbes magazine as a top U.S. bank, takes great pride in investing in our friends and neighbors. For more than 100 years, we've worked to make our customers' dreams come true, earning trust with convenient and reliable financial tools, checking in savings accounts, home and consumer loans, small business loans, and low-rate credit cards. Wherever you are on your financial journey, we're there with you every step of the way. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've messed up your daughter's haircut. Do you A, get spiritual? Mom, where's the mirror? Beauty is within. Oh. B, find the positives. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or C, show empathy. Mom, you really don't have twinsies. I kind of love it. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Back on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show, where we'll wrap things up looking at the rankings of Class 2A. Rex's Road to the Rock rankings in this classification are almost unchanged as well, as Hazen remains number one after having a bye week. Carlisle remains at number two after beating Hampton 47-0. Bigelow is still number three following its 43-14 win over Magazine, while Mount Ida checks in at number four again this week after beating Murphy. 49 to 14 and Mark Tree moves right back into the 2A rankings after only one week removed taking over the number five spot after beating McCrory 22 to 12 and East Poinsett County was defeated by Earl 32 to 26. 
Some of the other big games going on in Class 2A this week include Clarendon at Mark Tree, Dirks at Hoyan, Mineral Springs visiting Mount Ida, and Little Rock Episcopal at Hazen. So there you have it, folks. We hope you've enjoyed the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show, and we hope you'll tune back in tonight at 10 p.m. Central for the Simmons Bank Friday Night High School Scoreboard Show. Rex Nelson and Nate Olson will take you all the way up to midnight with scores, interviews, and the all-new Rex's Road to the Rock rankings. Coaches, journalists, play-by-play guys, be sure to call in your scores at 501-298-BALL. That's 501-298-2255. Five, so we can get every score in the state in tonight's Simmons Bank Friday Night High School Scoreboard Show. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Simmons Bank, Centerpoint Energy and Summit Utilities, UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Arkansas Delta Byways Regional Tourism, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Hot Springs, Keep Arkansas Beautiful, the Saracen Casino Resort in Pine Bluff, the Arkansas Scholarship Lottery, Arkansas's Brighter Future 529, in partnership with Arkansas Tourism and State Parks, the Poultry Federation, Lyon College in Batesville, Tim Griffith for Arkansas Attorney General Campaign, Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia, the Murphy's Art District in El Dorado, Arkansas Rice, Washita Baptist University, and the Great American Conference. Folks, I'm Kelly Blair, and I hope you've enjoyed listening half as much as I've enjoyed talking sports with you this week. Come on back and join us again next Friday on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. a special sports presentation from the EAB Sports Network. It's time for Nettleton High School Football on 101.3 Bob FM. Presented by NEA Baptist, Domino's Pizza, Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, First National Bank, and Kavanaugh Auto Group. Now let's go to the NEA Baptist broadcast booth and join Craig Miller for the First National Bank pregame show. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another big day of Nettleton Raider football. Last week, the Sickly Raiders traveled to Southside, where they played the Southerners for the very first time in history, and they escaped with a 13-12 win. Well, tonight they return home, where they hope to make Week 8 great by defeating the Forest City Mustangs and moving to 7-1 on the season. My name is Craig Miller, and I am joined here in the NEA Baptist broadcast position, Get Better with Baptist, by Raider Junior, Jacob Linderman. Jacob, I was so thankful that we were able to get a win last Friday night at Southside. I was too, and it was a really exciting win. I love to watch a blocked field goal, especially in high school. I like those blocked field goals whenever they work in our favor a whole lot more, though. I sure do. (laughs) The second second time that we traveled to Independence County, and both of the games came down to a blocked field goal. Thankfully, this one was in our favor, and the win moved Nettleton to 6-1 on the season, 3-1 in conference. They are tied for second place in the 5A East with Batesville and Wynn. Valley View sits atop the conference with a 4-0 mark, Nettleton and Win and Batesville are all three and one. Southside is fifth place in the conference at two and two. The Raiders truly are the masters of their own destiny. They win out, win the final three games, and they're going to get the number one seed conference championship. And that's good news. Our opponents tonight are the Forest City Mustangs. Now, Forest City has struggled this season. They're coming into tonight's game with a one and six record. They're one and three in conference. In non-conference action, they lost to Mills, Robinson, and Stuttgart. In conference play, they have lost to Southside, Valley View, and Batesville. But just last week, they picked up their first win of the season, a 20-6 victory over Paragould. The Mustangs always play us tough, and you can bet that they would like to make it two wins in a row here tonight. They've got a taste of victory, and you can bet they want to continue to feed that appetite the Raiders would like to prevent that from happening and we should be a whole lot healthier tonight than we were this time last week and that is wonderful news we're about to take a three-minute break and when we come back 
We're going to hear from Nettleton's coach, Stephen Hampton. He'll talk about last week's win over Southside and lay out tonight's game against Forest City. It's the Raiders. It's the Mustangs. It's Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Delivered by friends, family, and neighbors right here in your community. Bringing industry-leading technology to you, not the other way around. Your health record, your appointment scheduling, and your medications all in one place. And your lab results delivered the instant they're recorded. Do we look at healthcare differently? Absolutely. Experience the difference and you will too. NEA Baptist, healthcare for the Insurance. Bump it up at First National Bank. Now offering two CD specials with competitive interest and a one-time bump during the original term of the CD with no penalty. That means if you sign up and the rate goes up, you can bump it up. A 16-month CD at 2.51% annual percentage yield or a 26-month CD at 3.01% APY. Visit fnbank.net slash specials to lock in your rate today. Offer valid as of 9-28-2022. Penalty for early withdrawal. $1,000 minimum opening balance to open. Rates subject to change. Member FDIC Equal housing lender. Get huge savings now at every Cavanaugh dealership. Cavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have every make, every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Cavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy cars. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to KavanaughCars.com. The home team at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is proud to welcome Dr. Asa Schneichel. Dr. Schneichel's an A-State alum and is Northeast Arkansas's only joint revision surgeon, specializing in several forms of joint replacement. He joins the Jonesboro Sports and Orthopedics team with more than 40 years' experience in getting you back in the game. So if you have a sports injury, just some nagging aches, or even need help with concussion management, call JOSM at 932-1820 to schedule an appointment. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in our field so you can excel on your it's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twists, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole game. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. You raised your family here did every july 4th here refinish the floors here twice sized up your daughter's boyfriends here waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave this place has given you all you've dreamed of and now it's giving again in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from simmons bank dreams realized simmonsbank.com member fdic equal housing lender subject to credit approval we're here with coach stephen hampton for our weekly visit on the first national bank pregame show coach hampton after everything that happened last week with the flu and the stomach virus and the coaches being out and the players not being able to practice and after everything that happened i felt like we were very fortunate to leave south side with a win friday night well, I I would second that. We feel very fortunate, um, proud of our kids, of how they how they just kept battling. Um, you know, we weren't at our best. We weren't physically at our best. You know, um, but it was just you know our kind of theme was we just got to find a way. And I thought after the first drive, our defense settled in uh, and played really well. Uh, came up with some big stops, and then offensively, um, you know, we just found a way to to you know get an end zone enough times you know I think if we would have gotten that opening drive you know if we would have got that score uh, may have been a little bit different you know uh, momentum wise and outcome would have may have been a little bit different but uh, just proud of how our kids you know battled through some adversity for sure. I know that uh, Friday's game was our most sluggish offensive performance of the year how much do you think that illness and lack of practice had to do with that? Well, I think it had a, you know, played a huge, huge part. Um, obviously, you know, Q and Kurt um, didn't practice all week. And then, you know, it wasn't, you know, Cortez, it wasn't one of his, his best, uh, statistically speaking, wasn't one of his better better games. But I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, I mean, uh, just being fatigued and, um, you know, 
Ian Landrum wasn't, you know, at 100%. He was out all week. And, uh, but those guys, you know, we, we found a way. Um, and so, and then I give, give Southside some, you know, some credit as well. They're, they're a solid football team. They played really well defensively and, um, you know, that, you know, they're not bad. And so, again, you know, I don't want to take anything away from them, but I do feel like, uh, we were not at, at our best for sure. Coach, they say that sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Case in point, last Friday night, they score, they go up 6-0, to they kick the PAT, and it's good, but they whistle us for being offsides. And on the re-kick, Jordan Pegram blocks it, and that missed extra point winds up being the, the difference in the game. That may be the best offsides penalty that we've had all year long. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one for sure on the way that it, it worked out, um, you know, and they had an opportunity to accept the penalty and, and move it closer. And, you know, a lot of times the teams will go half the distance and go for two at that point. Uh, they chose to just decline it and, and reach, kick the you know extra point And, you know, Pegram got through and got a hand on it. We had a couple of big turnovers in the game that hurt us Friday night. They took advantage, jumped out to a 12 to zero lead. Your team came back and won 13 to 12 with everything that they went through. I'd say that this was a definite character revealing win. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, I, I've felt this way about our kids. You know, I've seen uh, at several times throughout the year where you know our kids they get a look in the eye in their eye that that hey you know they're not going they're not going to lose you know Curtis Smith he had that look in his eye you know they're the second half that hey, we're not going to lose this game you know and Blake Brown and Jordan those guys that they're going to find a way and um no matter you know how bad we played the first half or you know all that um they just kept fighting and they they're, they're going to find a way to win the game Late in the fourth quarter, we were nursing a 13 to 12 lead, but they were driving. Um, a couple of big plays really made the difference. First of all, that tackle for a loss by Blake Brown and Jordan Pegram. How big was that for y'all? Oh, it was huge. It was huge. You know, knocked them back. Um, obviously, you know, they had, we'd knocked their quarterback out, so they had the backup in who was, you know, kind of caught us off guard. I mean, he was a, a really good runner. Uh, kind of a different wrinkle there if you're late in the game and he's running the football and uh you know they're kind of matriculating and move the ball down the field and then to get them on a negative play like that um you know i think that was a huge play in the game especially with the field goal kicker that they had and then uh the field goal attempt that they they ended up trying yeah let's talk about that field goal attempt they lined up for uh, if my math is correct a 48 yard field goal that would have potentially been the game winner but then Caden Newsom blocked the kick and recovered the fumble. Walk me through Caden's big play. Well, we overloaded um, their right side, our left side of the of the line, uh, and we had had that in uh, th that particular block. We felt like that was, uh, you know, for extra points and things. We thought, you know, if we got into a position where we needed a block, that that would give us a, you know, a, a good opportunity. And on the whole, I mean, uh, Caden, he he pops, you know. He popped through there, unblocked, you know, his low center of gravity. He just busted through the line and, um, you know, got his hands up. It just the kick never had a chance. He he took it right off the right off the tee almost. Were you surprised that they were going for a field goal right there? Because I guess it was fourth and 15. They must have thought, well, we got a better chance of a 48-yard field goal just getting 15 yards on this defense. But that's a long field goal for a high school kicker. It, that is that is an extremely long field goal for a high school kicker. Um, you know, I've seen him on film. He'd kicked other field goals, nothing to that degree. You know, we're talking 30 yarders, 32, 33 yarder, you know, field goals. Um, you know, just listening to the guys, the chain crew that was on our sideline that were from Southside, you know, they spoke highly. The kid said he had a big leg, you know, that he has the leg to, that he's done that in practice. Uh, obviously not against a rush or anything like that. But um, so, uh, it was a little, little, little shocking, but uh, you know, I guess they felt like that gave them the best opportunity, and uh, they went for it. So glad that Caden Newsom was there to make the play. We got some help Friday night, in my estimation anyway, from the win Yellow Jackets as they beat Batesville. So looking forward, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but looking forward, if we win out, we will be the number one seed in the 5A East. You gotta like where we're at right now. 
Yeah, um, you know, I like you know. Obviously, we would we would love to be undefeated at this point, but but we're not. But as far as uh, being in a position where you can control, you know, your own destiny, you can control, you know, uh, and have things, you know, in your power. Uh, yeah, you got to feel good about that, you know, and so we don't have to, to depend on anybody else. Uh, we can just go out, and if, if we take care of our business, uh, you know, then, then you know, we got a great shot at being number one seed. So we just got to take it one game at a time, though. Coach, who were your players of the week last week? Uh, offensive, let's start off with the uh, the offensive players of the week. Well, I can sum this up uh, offense and defensively. Uh, we we set our entire team. Uh, you know, statistically, uh, there wasn't you know offensively there wasn't one guy that just stood out. Uh, you know, uh, but as a collective unit, uh, they kind of willed themselves to win, and that's offense and defense. And uh, uh, and so we gave it. We you know we recognized the entire team as far as those two units. Gotcha. What about special teams? Special teams was Caden Newsom came up with you know. Uh, that was a huge play, uh, you know, and he, he came through and, and made a huge block. So Caden Newsom was the special teams player of the week. Yeah, just a great win. Um, I guess you might, some people might call it an ugly win, but man, how sweet it is. I was sick as a dog as I was traveling back uh, from Southside on Friday, but because of the Raider victory, I promise you, I was feeling a whole lot better than I, than I would have been feeling. Uh, let's talk about our opponents this Friday, the Forest City Mustangs. What can you tell us about the Mustangs this season? Well, obviously they've, they've had, you know, not not a great year up to this point. They they are coming off uh, their first win. They beat Perigal, um, but you know they've they've got got players. They've got a huge offensive line. Uh, their left tackle is a kid that's six seven, three hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, just uh, you know a really really big offensive line. Uh, they've always got you know some some athletic kids that that can do some things with the ball in their hand. Um, just kind of a dangerous team, you know. Uh, just had they've struggled up to this point uh, of figuring things out and being consistent, um, you know. And we just hope, you know, that that doesn't start this this Friday, you know. Uh, but we just got to go out and play our game, um, you know, and play well, play crisp, um, you know, and take care of the football. And if we do those things, you know, I like our op- you know, I like our chances. Coach, I always ask you this question in our visits. How are we doing health-wise uh, this week? Uh, after what we went through the last week, I'm talking not only injuries, but uh, as far as just the health of the of the kids. Is everybody doing okay this week health-wise? Well, I think you mentioned this last week on our show. You kind of uh, alluded to this as a pre, pre-recorded interview, you know, that we do this on Wednesday. And so we just came from the practice field. Uh, and you were out there, and I think uh, you could you could it was considerably noticeable uh, the energy and uh, just enthusiasm was you know 120 percent times better than what it was a week ago, and so I think health wise we're we're in great shape you know um, you know no no injuries to speak of and physically we're feeling a lot better. And that is great news. Uh, one more question, Coach. Keys to victory. What are the Raiders going to have to do tonight to move to 7-1? and one? Well, we need to just get off to a fast start. Um, you know, execute. You know, just, just play clean. Um, you know, everybody do their assignment. Uh, take care of the football. Uh, and defensively, you know, just eliminate any big plays. Don't, you know, make them earn every, anything that they get. Um, you know, I think they, they've shown a, a lack of consistency up to this point where they have a tough time putting together a consistent drive. Uh, and so if we can make them go six, seven, eight plays, they're, you know, chances are uh, they're going to make a mistake and we'll be able to capitalize as long as we don't give up any just big plays. Got you, Coach. Good luck tonight. Let's go get a win for Raider Nation. Let's do it. Go Raiders. Raider proud, brother. Elite Eye Care has a new Jonesboro location that is now open at 2100 East Highland near the old Indian Mall. Hey, it's Brandon Baxter and the team at Elite Eye Care is who my family trusts for their personal eye care. Elite Eye Care specializes in eye care solutions for patients of all ages, and you can be assured that your family is cared for like their own. Schedule your appointment at EliteEyeCareAndOptical.com or call 972-6040. Elite Eye Care at 2100 East Highland in Jonesboro and at 1515 West Kings Highway in Paragool. Elite Eye Care. Your vision is our focus. 
A few years ago, a friend of mine was going to town to have lunch with the president of a college that he supported. He was stopped for speeding and the trooper asked for his driver's license and Jim said, I don't have my driver's license, they're in my billfold at home. The trooper asked why his billfold was at home. He said, I'm having lunch with the college president and the last thing you want to take with you is your billfold. Best price, best service. Glenn Sane and God bless our kids. Farmers and Merchants Bank announces the lobby of our new branch in Jonesboro is now open. The drive through is an MVP center with live video tellers 7 to 7 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. So in addition to our beautiful bank on Highland, you can also visit our new branch at the corner of Southwest Drive and Parker. More MVPs, more ATMs, more me banking at Farmers and Merchants Bank, member FDIC. Kids grow up so fast, and so has the Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic. This is our clinic's 10th year of creating healthier tomorrows for the kids in Northeast Arkansas. There's no need to cross the river or hit the highway for your cardiology or diabetes needs. Road trips are for fun, not for health care. The team at Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic is celebrating by doing what we always do, giving your kids more time to be kids. Learn more at archildrens.org slash Jonesboro. Nettleson High School Athletics is brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center and Toyo Tires. Where there's always one thing you can count on, we go the distance for you. Before you hit the road for a trip across country or across town, drop by Gateway Tire and Service Center and check out the great deals on Toyo Tires. Whether it's tires or auto repair, you can always count on one thing. At Gateway Tire and Toyo Tires, we go the distance for you. At Gateway Tire and Paragold and Jonesboro, we go the distance for you. Hello, I'm estate planning and elder law attorney Chad Oldham. More and more often today, I hear clients tell me that the only thing golden about the golden years is that it takes all the gold to grow old. Don't be a victim of rising health care and nursing home costs. Be prepared. Have a plan. Contact us today to find out how we help our clients protect and preserve assets for family and future generations. The Oldham Law Firm, 603 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro, or visit us on the web at oldhamlawfirm.com. And we welcome you back to the First National Bank pregame show here at Nettleton High School. At this point in the pregame show, I always like to go over the Raiders' history against their opponents. The Raiders and the Mustangs have played tackle football against each other 13 times in their history. They played for the first time in 2008, and they've played every season since then, except for 2020 when COVID-19 shortened the season. The Mustangs have won seven of those 13 games. The Raiders have won six. Nettleton will be trying to pull even all time in the series tonight. If you look at common opponents, you would think that we would have a very good chance of doing so. We beat Southside 13 to 12. Southside beat Forest City 36 to zero. Advantage Nettleton. We lost a heartbreaker at Batesville on a last second touchdown. Batesville beat Forest City 37 to six. We beat Paragool 35 to zero. Parag uh, Forest City beat the Rams 20 to six. So if you believe in comparing scores. As my old junior high coach, the legendary coach Pat Hawk used to say, hey man, don't be comparing scores. That's why they play the game. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. It's game night at Nettleton. It's a beautiful night for Raider Field. We'll take a brief two-minute break, and when we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the kickoff. It's Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Savings now at every Cavanaugh dealership. Cavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have every make, every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Cavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy cars. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to KavanaughCars.com. You raised your family here. Here. Did every July 4th here, refinished the floors here twice, sized up your daughter's boyfriends here, waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave. This place has given you all you've dreamed of, and now it's giving again. 
in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man. Realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from Simmons Bank. Dreams realized. SimmonsBank.com. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender subject to credit approval. It's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twists, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole gang. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Elite Eye Care has a new Jonesboro location that is now open at 2100 East Highland near the old Indian Mall. Hey, it's Brandon Baxter and the team at Elite Eye Care is who my family trusts for their personal eye care. Elite Eye Care specializes in eye care solutions for patients of all ages, and you can be assured that your family is cared for like their own. Schedule your appointment at EliteEyeCareAndOptical.com or call 972-6040. Elite Eye Care at 2100 East Highland in Jonesboro and at 1515 West Kings Highway in Paragu. Elite Eye Care. Your vision is our focus. We welcome you back to Raider Field, where you are tuned in to the First National Bank pregame show. Our pregame coverage is brought to you by First National Bank, where they put you first always. Craig Miller and Jacob Linderman sitting high atop Raider Field in the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Get better with Baptist. Tonight, it's the Nettleton Raiders taking on the Forest City Mustangs. The coin has been flipped. Nettleton has won the coin toss and they have elected to receive the opening kickoff. So the offense, if all goes well, the offense will be taking the field first. And we're about four and a half minutes away from that happening. The teams are not on the field just yet. The cheerleaders have got the spirit line. So let's tell you going. So let's tell you about the starters for Nettleton. We'll start on the defense tonight. The defensive line, Jordan Pegram, Cam Phillips, Caden Newsom, and Keon Stallings get in the start. Man, what a, a very good defensive line. And they really set the tone for this Raider defense. They've done so all year long. The linebackers, Blake Brown, Kylan Shelton, and Cohen Liggins. Blake Brown leads the team with 76 tackles, 10 of those for loss. One forced fumble, one fumble recovery. He has really had an outstanding season from the middle linebacker position. The defensive secondary, Brandon Alexander is back. He was not able to be here last Friday night as he was under the weather. He was sick as a lot of the Raiders were throughout the week. Brandon Alexander is back as his normal starting position at cornerback. He's joined on the other side by Derek Island. And the safeties for the Raiders, Miles Williams and Jamie Morris. Miles Williams has four interceptions on the season. Jamie Morris, 28 tackles and one pick six. Good to see the Raiders being led out on the field by Old Glory. The Raiders are, that's Jamarcus, Jamarcus uh, Johnson, who is carrying the flag. And the Raiders wearing their dark gray uniforms, gold helmets, as always, looking sharp. The starters for the Raiders on offense. And we'll start on the offensive line, left to right. Left tackle, we got Kylan Gates. Left guard, Ian Landrum. The center is Zach Davis. The right guard is Kobe Miller. And the right tackle, number 72, is Garrett Campbell. And Jacob, that offensive line, they've done a really good job in the trenches all season long. They sure have. There are some war horses for sure. Those guys are warriors, as Coach Pitts would say. They're some dogs. They are some dogs. And they, uh, you know, we're about to tell you about the skill guys, the receivers, the quarterback, the running backs, the guys that get their name in the paper, the guys that get all the glory. Well, if it weren't for the big uglies there in the, uh, on the offensive line, the pretty boys would not get to shine. And it's one thing that I respect about our skill guys. Every time one of them comes up, and, and I don't think we've had a player of the week yet who's an offensive lineman. Usually it's a receiver, a quarterback, a running back. But uh, they never fail to give credit to the offensive line. So let's do that here at the beginning of the game. The offensive line so important to this team. We're just about two minutes away from kickoff here at Raider Field. The skill guys, the quarterback is Maddox Hampton, the mad dog. He's a sophomore, and I – I think you would agree with me whenever I say, Jacob, that everybody at Nettleton is extremely pleased with the play of their sophomore signal caller. 
I, I sure am from watching him in the box. He's had an excellent season. He's thrown quite a few touchdowns. He's had a good year. 17 touchdowns. That's how many he's thrown. 17 touchdowns. And how many games have we played? Seven? Seven. We played seven games. I'm doing the math, that's that's uh, more than two per game. That is um, that is uh, a very good uh, season as far as throwing touchdown passes, 17 here in week seven, or this is week eight actually, but after week seven, he's only thrown four interceptions, 17 touchdowns as opposed to four interceptions. His passer rating is extremely good. His completion percentage is extremely good, 65%. 1,342 yards, that's how many yards that he has passed for. We got ourselves a very good quarterback in the Mad Dog. He's joined in the backfield by Keandre Pope, the senior running back has 631 yards on the season, two touchdowns. The receiving crew is led by Q Thompson, the leading receiver with 36 receptions, 684 yards, 10 touchdowns. The playmaker joins him on the receiving crew. He also plays quarterback some, runs the ball pretty regularly. Talking about Curtis Smith, over 1,000 all-purpose yards, passing, rushing, receiving. Curtis, they call him the playmaker for the season. He leads the team with 18 touchdowns. The other receivers, Braylon King, who had a huge third down conversion catch last week, and Caleb Tedder, who is the tight end, the hard charging tight end. And we are just about set for the kickoff. 10 seconds on the scoreboard and counting down, the referees are convened in the middle of the field on the beautiful oval end. And as soon as the clock strikes zero, Forest City will be kicking off. The Raiders ready to receive. Back deep for the Raiders is Keandre Pope and Q Thompson. The whistles are blown and we're ready to get things underway. Beautiful night at Raider Field. So glad that you're able to join us wherever you might be. Glad that you're hanging out with us. Taking in some Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Washington is the kicker for Forest City. And we got everything except for a football. Actually, the referee does have the football out there. The official has the football. And we're waiting, I suppose, on the kicker. He's getting his uh, knee pads in, so evidently he was made to make some alterations to his to his uniform. Now number 20 comes out. I guess he is going to be kicking off. That is Eddie Williams. A slight delay here. And hopefully we can get this thing underway as we are one minute past 7 o'clock by my watch. 70 degrees and clear. Just a beautiful night for football. Great crowd of Nettleton Raider fans here ready to support their team. What a heck of a junior high game we had last night, Jacob, as Nettleton defeated Valley View 13 to 12. And if last night's any, any indication, we've got some good football to look forward to over the next three years. That Nettleton junior high team, holy cow, they looked awfully good last night. They sure did. So Williams on to kick off and the Play is whistle dead before it could even get started, and evidently there's another um, equipment problem. Number 10 for the Raiders, that's, that is Tyler Craig, has to come off the field, and they bring somebody else in, and we're having trouble getting going. I don't know what the issue is, but uh, finally, they... Uh, Braylon King comes out, and he's going to be on the re returning team. Uh, onside kick, and Nettleton falls on it. Jordan Pegram, actually, no, that's not Jordan Pegram. Correction, that is number 40. Tristan Crawford, thought it was a 90 from here, but Crawford falls on it, and it's going to be first and 10 Raiders. Good field position. They're going to have the ball on their own 48-yard line, and Maddox Sampton in the Raider offense. Going to work. First down and 10 from the 48. Nettleton will be moving right to left on your radio dial if you're listening on Bob FM. Of course, if you're tuned in to our YouTube channel, then you know Nettleton is, you know which direction they're headed. Moving right to left, moving south to north. North to south will be 
the Mustangs, at least in the first quarter. Maddox Sampton in the shotgun. He's got two receivers spread out wide to the left. Two tight ends to the right. Tedder in the slot position. In motion is Q Thompson. He gives to the Pope. Keandre makes a cut, runs up the middle, has first down yardage. He's gain of about 10. Let's see what the spot is. That may be a first down on first down. They're going to mark it just a little bit short. It's going to be second down and one. Good run by the Pope. It sure was, and that was great blocking. I saw a pulling tackle, and good job by the offensive line. Created a great size hole, and Keandre Pope hit the hole hard. Great run by Keandre Pope. Love it when the Pope hits the hole and hits it hard. He's got a good burst about him. Second down and one. Two receivers spread out wide right. Mad Dog gives again to the Pope. Running left side off. Left tackle has the first down. Is brought down about the 36 yard line. First and 10 Raiders. And this run game is working right now. I don't see why we stop it. Keandre Pope is looking really solid out of the jump. Good job Keandre Pope. A couple of sayings come to mind. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Danks with the one that brung you, maybe. If you look at the Raiders' offensive stats this year, though, they're predominantly a pass-oriented offense. First down and 10, let's see if they decide to go to the air. The Mad Dog instead gets to the Pope. He bobbles it, catches it, falls forward, gets to the line of scrimmage, going to be second down and 10. And that could have been disastrous if the Pope had not hauled that, uh, that bobbled ball in. It sure could have. I thought he might have completely lost it, but he held on to it. Good job, Pope, for holding on. So second down and 10 for the Raiders after the fumble, the recovered fumble. And Curtis Smith is in at quarterback. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton, spread out far to the right with Caleb Tedder, the interior receiver. Spread out not quite so far to the right. Curtis is going to run it himself right up the middle. Makes a cut. He's across the... 25-yard line before he's brought down. It's going to be first down for the Raiders after a gain of about 11 by Curtez Smith. And Curtez has proved he's a good runner all year, and he ran it right up the hole there, found it hard, and just good job, Curtez Smith. 9.54 on the clock and ticking. We're scoreless here at Raider Field. Nettleton's first drive of the ball game, and they have been able to move the ball at will on the ground. They've yet to have a pass play. Let's see if they do it here on first and 10. The Mad Dog, Maddox Sampton from the gun. He's going to drop straight back. He's looking to pass. Pass is complete to Curtis Smith. He makes a move at the 15, and he is still on his feet. Breaks a tackle across the five into the end zone. Touchdown, Curtis Smith. Touchdown, Maddox Hampton. Touchdown, Raiders. And that's a great catch by Curtis Smith. He hauls it in, and three defenders come on him, and he just dodges them, breaks a couple of tackles, and hauls and one into the end zone. Good job, Curtis Smith. Good job, Maddox Hampton. Touchdown, Raiders. The first pass of the game, and it results in a touchdown. Love to see that. Six to nothing, Raiders. Joseph Newhong out on the field to kick the PAT. Caleb Tedder with the hold. The snap is good. The hold is good, and the kick is wide right. So the PAT is no good with 621 remaining in the first quarter. Your score is Nettleton 6, Forest City 0. 921 remaining. We will take a 30-second break. Back with more Raider football after these words from one of our sponsors on the EAB Sports Network. This is Keith Baird with Baird Auto Group. There's nothing that brings our community together like high school sports. No matter what the scoreboard says, it's a winning feeling just to be a part of it. At Baird, we want you to have the feeling anytime you come into one of our dealerships. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Don't buy anywhere else until you shop at Baird location near you. Don't get a bad deal, get a Baird deal. Because why pay more? Saving service, great selection too. Raider football on MTV and the EAB Sports Network. Wherever you are tonight, we're sure glad that you tuned in to the broadcast. Nettleton here in week eight, looking to move to seven and one as they have a six to zero lead over the Forest City Mustangs. After a 24 yard touchdown pass from the Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton to Curtis Smith, who broke several tackles fighting for the end zone. Nettleton will 
will be kicking off to Forest City. Antonio Almarez on to kick off. Antonio Almarez. Back deep is Sidney Owens, number 11. And number four, that is Rashad Washington for the Mustangs. Forest City tried to go with an onside kick to lead the game off. Middleton recovered and marched it right down the field. Low line drive kick, and it is fielded at about the 33-yard line. It was going out of bounds, but the Mustangs number 20, Eddie Williams, hopped on it. And that's the smart play, I suppose, because that's a live ball. And Middleton, the Raiders were breathing down his neck. If they would have got it before he did, well, it's, it's Raider football. So nice job there by Eddie Williams. Go ahead and grabbing that thing. If he would have waited a half a second, it would have went out of bounds, and they'd get it first and 10 at the 35, but not worth the risk. First and 10 at the 33, and the Mustang offense taking the field. They're dressed in all white with blue helmets. The quarterback is number nine, da Daquan Scott. Scott gives to the running back, and boy, he is met immediately. He is hammered in the backfield by the murder man, Cam Phillips, tackle for a loss. The murder man said, I don't think I'm gonna let this play even develop. He sure didn't. I mean, he sniffed that play out from the get-go. He found the hole and just penetrated it there. Good job, murder man Cam. Well, if that first play is any indication, it's gonna be a long night for this Mustang offense. It's the, the murder man and that Raider defensive line definitely won the battle right there. So it's gonna be second down and 12 for the Mustangs. Fumble on the play, picked up by the running back. Another tackle for a loss, Jamie Morris leading the way over there. And it's gonna be a, a loss of a couple of yards, but I see a flag on the play afterwards. A little bit of uh, extracurricular activity, I suppose. And he's having a talk with uh, Keon and with Forest City's Tamarion Burks. We'll see what the indication is. It, uh, it sure looked like it's probably going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct type penalty. Boy, that's awfully early to start that. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Forest City and against Nettleton. Those penalties will offset. And so it will be the result of the play is a loss of a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and 14. And you can bet that there will be a discussion about that probably as soon as this series is over with. Third down and 14 for the Mustangs. Middleton with four men on the defensive line. Definite passing down for Forest City, and that is what they're going to do. Dropping straight back. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run it, and he is tackled by Blake Brown. After a short game, Blake was about a yard away from having a quarterback sack. Maybe a gain of one. It's going to be fourth down and 13 for Forest City, and they're going to punt. And that's a good job by Blake Brown. He was spying the quarterback the entire time and brought him down before he could scramble too far out of the pocket. Coach Allen Johnson is – having a discussion with his defense down there. And I'm sure among other things, I see Jalen Allison also having a talk with Keon. And among other things, they're saying, hey, we've got to be smarter than that. We can't get no unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. We're better than that. The punt is up and away, and it is taking a Mustang roll. Q Thompson, boy, he's right there breathing on it. Q, what in the world are you doing? It is uh, – I'm so sorry for saying it like that, but Q was like fainting like he was going to touch the ball while there was a couple of white jerseys right there on him. Uh, mercy. Thankfully, he did not touch it, and it's going to be first and 10 Raiders at their own 20-yard line. I, maybe you can understand what he was up to. I don't know. There was, there was no point to that in my opinion. Thankfully, um, Nettleton's offense able to trot back out there with a 6 to nothing lead. Mad Dog Hampton, Maddox Hampton. In the gun, the Pope 
in the backfield with him. Q and the playmaker spread out wide left. In motion is Q. He gives it to Pope. Pope is wrapped up in the backfield. Number 29, Willie Murphy on the stop. It's going to be a loss of one, second down and 11 for the Raiders. And that was, looks like there's a flag on the play. Yeah, another flag. and uh, See what the call is there. It's a dead ball. Personal foul against Personal Forest foul. City. Didn't see exactly what happened, but that's the second straight personal foul called against this Forest City team. And give credit to the referees. They are doing their best to maintain control out there on the field. Result of the penalty, it's a first down for Nettleton. It's going to be first and 10 for the Raiders. They're on 34-yard line. Another flag came after the play. Was not able to see who it involved, but it was against Forest City. And so a little bit of contentiousness out there on the field right now. The referee wanting to reset the clock. Seven minutes on the clock here in the first quarter. And I think he's, he's asked them to put some more time on. Right now, there's 71 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. I don't think that's what he meant. I don't think that's what he meant either. That's a lot of time. It's a lot, lot of time. 7-12. There we go. Seven minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. Nettleton with a 6 to nothing lead. First and 10 for the Raiders. They're on 34-yard line in a game that's all of a sudden moving at a glacial pace. In motion is the playmaker, Curtis Smith. Maddox is going to pass. It's complete to Q Thompson. Q Thompson, he's in the flats, and he is wrapped up at about the 36-yard line. So it'll be a gain of a couple, second down and eight. And I like the idea there by Coach Wilson there, a little screen pass. We usually have good luck with the screen passes there, and that's not a bad gain of two there. Good reception by Q Thompson. Yeah, Q Thompson is a dynamic, electrifying talent. Get the ball in his hands and good things have happened all year long. I like that play myself. Second down and eight. Mad Dog gives to the Pope. Pope busts through the line and he is still moving forward, thrown down at about the 43 yard line. He's gonna be just about a yard short of the first down. It's gonna be third down and one for the Raiders. That's a good gain of seven there by Keandre Pope. He fought for a really good yardage. Good job by Keandre. Raiders have shown that they can definitely move the ball on the ground against this Mustang defense. 5.55 on the clock here in the first quarter. Curtis Smith and Keandre Pope in the backfield. Curtis gives to the Pope. The Pope across the 50, across the 45, that's where he's brought down the 44 yard line inside Mustang territory. And it's first and 10 Raiders. And it's like the Mustang is doing quite a bit of talking after every play out there. Hopefully we can remain cool and not do anything dumb, get any kind of 15 yard penalties against us. First and 10 for the Raiders at the 45 yard line of Forest City. Curtis Smith and Q Thompson, top receivers on this team, spread out far to the right. In motion is Caleb Tedder. The Mad Dog dropping straight back, looking downfield, throwing deep. It is incomplete, intended for Curtis Smith. On the defense is DJ Sinclair. There was a little bit of bumping down there, but no, nothing that would warrant a pass interference penalty, no flags, so it's going to be an incomplete pass, second down and 10 for the Raiders. It looks like that ball just had a little bit too much arm action on it. Maddox slightly overthrew the playmaker there, and that's hard to do because the playmaker is very fast. He got some very good closing speed for sure. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Mad Dog with two backs in the backfield. He gives to the Pope. The Pope finds the hole. He's across the 40, the 35-yard line before he's tackled out of bounds. He's going to be close to a first down, and they're going to mark it just a little bit short. It'll be third down and about a yard for the Raiders. 
and Keandre Pope has been running really physical all night. He's hitting the hole hard and just bouncing in and out. He's been playing very physical. I like the way the Pope's playing tonight. So third down and one for the Raiders, and Curtez Smith, the quarterback, Keandre Pope, his left hip. Curtez is going to keep it himself. He's got the first down and then some. Across the 20, the 10, into the end zone. Curtez Smith with his second touchdown of the night, a 35-yard run. The Raiders lead 12 to nothing. And that's a good run by Curtez Smith. He found the hole early. He bounced out and then had blockers for the touchdown. Good job, Curtez Smith. What a run. So the second possession of the night for the Raiders, and both of them had, have resulted in touchdowns 12 to nothing and Nettleton who missed the PAT the first time I thought they might go for two try to make it a even 14 but Joseph Newhung is back out to attempt the PAT the kick is up and the kick is good so with 426 remaining in the first quarter Nettleton has opened up a 13 to 0 lead. We'll take a 30 second break and when we come back we'll have more Raider football for you here on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Tired of slow internet? Feel like you're stuck in the old days? It's time to catch up with Empower, delivered by Craighead Electric. Thanks to Empower, you don't have to wait for high-speed internet. Our new cutting-edge technology makes our services more reliable and faster than the competition. Call 870-336-0999 to check internet availability in your area. That's 870-336-0999. Empower, high-speed internet for your neck of the woods. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Hope everybody's doing all right out there in Raider Nation, wherever you may be. Glad to have you watching. We've got people watching all over the world. Nettleton fans, Raider Nation extends coast to coast like butter toast, all four corners of the world. We've got proud Raiders serving the United States military from overseas who let me know they watch the game on a regular basis. So glad to have them. Glad to have you along for the ride as well. Craig Miller and Jacob Linderman in the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Get better with Baptist. It's 12, excuse me, 13 to nothing. Nettleton with the lead. 426 remaining here in the first quarter. Antonio Almarez on to kick off. He's done a great job all season long as the the kickoff specialist, Joseph Newhong, handles the, the field goals. Antonio boots it short, filled it at the 35-yard line, and, boy, that's a good return. Across the 50 to the 40-yard line, uh, finally he's shoved out of bounds. That's number 29, Willie Murphy. And boy, he, he ran that with authority all the way back to the Nettleton 35-yard line. The Mustangs looking at a short field here. They sure are, and... He was almost brought down early by the kicker, but Antonio just couldn't hold on. That's a good run. He filled it at about the 35, returned it to, he returned it to the 35. If my math is correct, that's about a 30 yard return. And I was trained by the great Charlene Jernigan and Jim McDaniel. So I think my math is correct. Triple H's music playing here over the loudspeaker. Forest City with a loaded backfield. Quarterback, little option. He keeps it himself, and he's brought down by Blake Brown. He fumbled the ball. However, they whistled it dead beforehand. And that was a little bit of a uh, premature whistle right there. It would have been Raider ball as Blake Brown forced a fumble, but they, they whistled it dead, and it's going to be a tackle for a loss. Loss of three, second down 13. And that's a good tackle by Blake Brown. Blake Brown really knows football, and he shows it every time he's on the field. Good job, Blake Brown. Yeah, he's got a good combination of physical ability. He's big, he's fast, but he's also very, very savvy. He seems like he's always he always knows where the ball is, and he's there making plays. Great high school linebacker, Blake Brown, and he will be playing on Saturdays next year if he chooses to. Second down and 13, and Mustangs are going to pass. Under pressure, Keon Stallings. Flushes him out of the pocket. A desperation heave. It is incomplete. Broken up by the carpenter, Jamie Morris, at the 10-yard line. Jamie, a little slow getting up. I think he's more frustrated than anything. He wanted a 
uh, an interception. As it is, he knocked it out of Rashad Washington's hand. Incomplete pass. It's going to be third down and 13. And that's good coverage by the Carpenter. We know he could pick off a ball. He has a pick six under his belt this year, and I was hoping he could get a second interception on the year. I think he wanted that one. I think he, I think that's why he was so frustrated getting up and banging the turf is because he thought that if he could have caught that, he could have made a house call. 319 remaining. The clock stopped by the incomplete pass. It's third down and 13 for the Mustangs. They have the ball at the Raider 38-yard line. Dropping back to pass and going deep, and it is – Caught inside the five-yard line. Excellent catch down there by Rashad Washington. And they throw a flag as well. So let's see what that's all about. There was some – there was some um, – uh, some, uh, how do you say, touching going on down there. That's a nice way of putting it. Uh, it's going to be against Nettleton, it looks like. Yeah, pass interference against Nettleton. I believe they got Jamie on – Pass interference. Obviously, they're going to take the result of the play, which is going to be first down and goal to go for the Mustangs. Inside the five-yard line, it's going to be at the three. And so the Raider defense needing to stop right here as Forest City knocking on the door here in the first quarter. They give to the running back number three, and he is stopped by the murder. Actually, he's still going forward. Murder man and the fumble on the play recovered by the Raiders. Recovered by the Raiders. I believe the murder man may have stripped the ball and Blake Tom Blake Brown. <laughs> Blake Brown with the recovery. Great play by the murder man and Blake Brown as the murder man stripped the ball. Blake Brown recovered it. Huge play. First down Raiders. I think we need to make Murder Man Cam an honorary nasty boy after that play. Murder Nasty would be a great suiting name for him. What about K Nasty? That might work too. Murder Nasty just a little bit wordy. I can see that. Curtis Smith, the quarterback, he's in the end zone. He's going to run it himself, able to get out and gets across to the across the five to the six-yard line. So a little bit of breathing room as Nettleton took over first and ten at about the one-yard line, two-yard line, I should say. Right now it's second down and six from the six. Maddox Sampton back out on the field in the gun at quarterback. He's got Keandre Pope on his right hip. I don't know if you can see it on your screen right now, but Forest City has a couple of very nice looking buses that they brought wrapped up in Mustang blue. The Pope. Running left side, he gets the edge and is brought down at about the 13-yard line, 12-yard line, close to a first down. They're moving the chains. First down, Keandre Pope, first down Raiders. That's a good run by Keandre Pope. He's a really physical runner, and he broke a tackle there. Good job, Keandre Pope. I said they're moving the chains. Yeah, they're moving the chains. They started to move it, then they stopped. About the time I said they're moving the chains, they stopped moving them. I think the uh, officiating crew trying to make the TMC look foolish. I think that's what they're doing. I don't need any help in that regard. 158 on the clock. Nettleton leading 13 to nothing here in the first quarter. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton in the gun. He gives to the Pope. Pope looking for a hole. And he didn't find much that time. He is shoved back. Gonna, they're going to give him forward progress, of course. But even with forward progress, that may be a, a short loss on that. No gain in any event. It's going to be second down and 10. And there was just not a lot of running room there. Forest City clogged that hole fast. Good job by that Forest City defensive line. Forest City, they've, they've taken their lumps this year. It's obviously not been a good season. But this is a tremendous tradition. Uh, tremendous program with incredible tradition. And winning is bred into these young men. You can bet they're going to play hard. Maddox Sampton back deep, uh, back to pass, throwing deep. It is incomplete, intended for Curtez, and it's broken up by Rashad Washington right there at the 50-yard line. It's going to be an incomplete pass, third down and 10. For the Raiders. Good defense there by Rashad Washington. Washington is quite the athlete. We saw him make an incredible catch down there, and yep. he plays good coverage on defense too. 
We knew the Mustangs would be athletic, and they're proving it. Third down and 10 for the Raiders. Big play right here. Nettleton up 13 to zero in the first quarter. Maddox Sampson to pass. It's complete to Q Thompson. He is met immediately, but I think he's got first down yardage, and he sure does. They're gonna move the chains. At the 22 yard line, it's gonna be first and 10 Raiders. That's a good catch by Q Thompson. He held onto the ball with the guy coming towards him and just smacking him hard. Good job, Q Thompson. Yeah, Q is very sure-handed receiver. Excellent hand-eye coordination, excellent hands. He can go up and get it, and when he gets it, he has a tendency to hang on to it. Less than a minute to play here in the first quarter, 13 to nothing to score. The Raiders with the lead. Mad Dog's gonna pass, it is run pass option, pass complete to Curtis Smith. Curtis fighting his way to the 29 yard line. It's gonna be a gain of seven, second down and three. And Curtis fought for those yards there. He had a man wrapped around him while he kept fighting for extra yards. Good job, Curtis Smith. Correction, gain of six, second down and four. 17 seconds on the clock. Nettleton will have time to get one more play in if they choose to do so, but it looks like they're just gonna let the clock roll down to zero. So at the end of the first quarter, your score is Nettleton 13, Forest City zero. We'll take a 60 second break. When we come back, more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Save $100 instantly at Plaza Tire Service when you purchase a set of four in stock. Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP Off-Road Tires. That's instant savings today at Plaza Tire Service. Plus, you can make the purchase easy on your wallet with a Plaza Tire Service credit card or one of our no-credit-needed financing solutions. Now's the time to outfit your truck or SUV with a great set of go-anywhere, do-anything Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP Off-Road Tires and save $100 instantly exclusively at Plaza Tire Service. <laughs> When you bank at First Security, you're choosing better for yourself and fellow Arkansans. Better service from friendly professionals who really invest in your goals. Better solutions with convenient tools and smart resources. And better support for the things that matter to you, as well as the communities that matter to us all. Because finding your better at First Security makes Arkansas better too. First Security. Bank better. Member FDIC. We welcome you back to Raider Field on a great night here at Raider at Nettleton. It's Donnie Tennyson's birthday. Happy birthday to Nettleton's former coach, Donnie Tennyson, one of the greatest men to ever walk those sidelines, one of the greatest men I've ever known. He is the father of Nettleton's uh, running back wide receiver coach, Blake Tennyson. And just uh, he's a former uh, principal, assistant principal of the junior high school, former teacher, of course. and. Uh, just a great, great man. Happy birthday to Donnie Tennyson. His former team, the Nettleton Raiders, leading Forest City 13 to nothing here in the beginning of the second quarter. It's second down and four for the Raiders. Maddox Hampton, the quarterback, in the gun. He gives to the Pope. The Pope is tackled in the backfield by number 32, Octavian Washington. He might have fallen forward and got to the line of scrimmage. I believe he did, so no gain on the play. It'll be third down and four for the Raiders. Curtis Smith comes in to replace the Mad Dog at quarterback. A lot of times in situations like this, this season, the Raider coaches will put Curtez out there in kind of a wildcat type formation. Direct snap to their best runner, Curtez, and he is running it. He has his helmet ripped off of him, and they're going to throw a flag for that. He was stopped about the line of scrimmage, but had his helmet just ripped off and thrown back to about the 16-yard line. You can't do that, Jacob. They're going to call a personal foul on that. Personal foul, foul face mask face against mask. Forest City. The re result of that 15-yard penalty is going to be a first down, Raiders. It sure is, and that's a good call because that's a good way to get a kid hurt. Yeah, that's not good uh, tackling technique. Let's just put it that way. So after the 15-yard penalty, 
It's going to be first and 10 Raiders at their own 44-yard line. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton, back to work as his Raiders lead for City 13 to nothing here with 11-12 remaining in the second quarter. Three receivers spread out to the left, one to the right. Now Curtis in motion. Mad Dog's going to pass. Looking deep. It's intended for Curtis Smith as incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Curtis in motion. Boy, he got a good run and start at that play. And just unable to haul that thing in. He, I wish he could because that would have been an impressive catch. Looks like he was going up with one hand and just bounced off of it. Good try by Curtis Smith. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Raiders. Cortez makes his way back. He spread out far to the right. Maddox Hampton in the gun. Keandre Pope on his right hip. Q Thompson spread out wide left. Nettleton going with two tight ends out there, A.D. Burnett and Caleb Tedder. Both of them lined up on the right side. Caleb Tedder in kind of a slot position. Mad Dog passes complete to Q Thompson. Q has the first down. Falls forward to the 45-yard line of the Mustangs. Move the chains. First down, Raiders. That's a good job by Maddox Hampton finding Q Thompson early. And Q Thompson was sitting there in the pocket of the coverage. Good job by Q Thompson finding the little gap in the coverage and getting the first down. Pretty good strategy. Get the ball to Q. It sure is. Let Q take care of business. First down and 10 for the Raiders. Maddox Hampton rolling to his right, looking to pass, looking downfield. It is incomplete, intended for Q Thompson. Knocked incomplete by Roshide Washington. It's going to be second down and 10. And that's almost complete, just bobbled out of both of the defender and receiver's hands. Good coverage by Rashad Washington, and good job, Q Thompson. It may have been Jamonte Flanoy, actually, who made the good play right there. But in any event, it was a Mustang, and they have done a good job. I'll say this about Forest City, their pass defense, been very impressive here tonight. They have shut down this Nettleton passing attack. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. They give to Keandre Pope. Keandre has a huge hole, goes through it, gets first down and then some, spins his way forward across the 15 yard line, down to about the 14. First down Raiders, what a run by Keandre. And that's a really good run by Keandre Pope. He found the hole and kept running and it looked like he might have caught a referee there. I hope that referee is okay. Yeah, there's an official's timeout and the referee is Looks like he's collecting himself just a little bit. Hopefully everybody is all right. all right. We will just keep it right here as this break shouldn't last long. I do not think we'll keep it right here and tell you it sure was good to see our man Will Oswalt up in the booth a little bit earlier. He was wearing his Mustang blue, his Forest City blue. But that's all right. That's the school he went to. And like the Beach Boys said, Jacob, you got to be true to your school. If you go to Forest City, be a Mustang. You go to Nettleton, Raider proud of the day you die. Be true to your school. That's the way I look at things. Will Oswalt from Forest City, you might want to, you definitely, no mind, you definitely want to check him out tonight on the Kavanaugh Auto Group Friday Night Light Scoreboard Show we will have all the scores for you as they go final. He'll talk to coaches and broadcasters from around the area. It's a great high school football show hosted by Will Oswalt. It's on the Ticket Radio Network. You can tune it in here in Jonesboro, 95.3, wherever you are, 953theticket.com. First down and 10 for the Raiders. The ball is on the 24-yard line of the Mustangs. They give to Keandre Pope. Keandre with some positive oh, yardage and a flag oh, flies after the play is over with, it's going to be second down and five at about the 20, but let's see what this flag is. There's been a lot of flags this game. It looked like Keandre they may have grabbed him by his hair. Keandre has the long dreadlocks hanging down. It looked like, which I, I think that's considered part of the uniform. Yeah, 
I think that's what it was. He, they, uh, they grabbed Keandre by his hair and yanked him back. And I think the, one of the referees might have thought that was a face mask. As it was, it was his hair that they grabbed, which is legal to do. But the result of the play, it's a gain of six for Keandre. It's second down and four. And I guarantee you that had to hurt. I, I bet. He has long hair. Second down and four. They give back to the Pope. The Pope across the 15-yard line. He is thrown forward across the first down line, and it's going to be first and ten Raiders after another good run by the Pope. That's another great run by Keandre Pope. He gets about five on that play. Pope has been running really solid tonight. It'll be first and ten for the Raiders. Ball on the 13-yard line of the Mustangs. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton. In the gun, his Raiders have a 13-0 lead over Forest City. They give to the Pope, and the Pope is wrapped up after a gain of a couple. It'll be, it'll be a gain of two. Second down and eight for the Raiders, and Nettleton in the red zone. Ball is marked at the 11-yard line. Second down and eight from the 11. 9.04 on the clock. Nettleton has controlled this game from start to where we are right now here in the second quarter. Handling their business. Mad Dog back to pass. It's complete to A.D. Burnett. A.D. Burnett into the end zone. Excuse me, A.D. Blackburn. A.D. Blackburn into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. And that's a good catch by A.D. Blackburn. He found him right on the seam. He called it in. Good job, A.D. Blackburn, for his first high school touchdown. And this is his first year playing high school football. What a catch for the sophomore, A.D. Blackburn. Man, don't you know that felt good for A.D. I apologize for calling him A.D. Burnett. A.D. Burnett, there was a, one of my great students, Adrian Burnett. That's where I was getting that. But it's A.D. Blackburn. And as you said, he's first year to play football, and he has a touchdown. Joseph New hung out, and he kicks the PAT. It is up, and it's good. So with 8.51 remaining in the second quarter, your score is now Nettleton 20, Forest City 0. We will call that the Domino's delivery of the game. The 11-yard pass from the Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton, to Adrian Blackburn. They call him A.D. Blackburn, number 32. He is a, uh, a basketball player, very good basketball player, and, and uh, just decided to go out for football this year. And he's experienced in the Friday Night Lights, and we're sure glad that he is. He's the recipient of the Domino's delivery of the night. If you want to make game night even better, order you some Domino's pizza. You can go to dominoes.com or order from the Domino's app. We greatly appreciate Domino's Pizza for sponsoring Nettleton Raider football. Nettleton has a 20 to zero lead here in the second quarter, 8.51 remaining. Joined in the, in the press box by some great old Nettleton Raiders. How about this? How about this? What, what in the free world? Good to see you guys. Y'all doing all right? Good to see you. Eli, holy cow. It's mega said, yes sir. It's, it's, uh, you, you have to forgive me, folks. I'm, I'm speechless. We got some great NTV uh, students from days gone by who have uh, come in Jack Hall and Kyle Tolley and Eli Campbell and Peyton Barr. Good to see you guys, man. Glad that you, you've come in to support the Raiders. Forest City kickoff return and he number 11 that is Sidney Owens he is brought down by Miles Williams so the Mustangs will take over first and 10 at their their own 33 33 yard line that's where the Mustangs will take over first and 10. Always great to see former Raiders come back and Especially. Say hey to the TMC. Really appreciate the guys coming in. Wasn't able to talk to them because live on the radio. Not able to talk to them, <laughs> but so good to see him. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. And they are back to work offensively. Nettleton with a four-man front. Jordan Pegram in the quarterback's grill as he throws, and it's incomplete. Brandon 
Alexander on the defense, second down and 10. That's good coverage by Brandon Alexander. We really missed him last week. There's a couple of big pass plays that he could have stopped. Good coverage by Brandon Alexander. 8.36 on the clock. The incomplete pass stops the clock at 8.36. Second down and 10 for Forest City. Quarterback is Daquan Scott, gives to the running back, and he is met immediately by big number 60. That is Jamarcus Johnson with the stop. Tackle for loss, a loss of four, and Jamarcus Johnson hit him as soon as he got the ball. He sure did. He found the gap and hit it really hard there, and he created havoc for that Mustang offensive line. Makes it third down and 13 for the Mustangs. Good job by Jamarcus. Quarterback scrambling, and he's got a little bit of running room, but he's brought down from behind by the murder man, short of the first down. He's tackling about the 40-yard line, 39-yard line. That's gonna be about three and a half, four yards short of the first down, and I assume that the Mustangs are going to punt here. It is a punting down. Four down and four from their own 39. Right now it looks like the offense is staying out. Let's see, they may, I bet you they try to get Nettleton to jump off sides and then they call timeout, then they punt. 7.28 and it's fourth down, 7.28 remaining in the first half and they, it looks like they are gonna go for it. Watch the ball, gentlemen. Four receive, they're gonna, they're, they snap it, gonna go for a pass and it is complete for a first down. Nice pass and a catch over there by DJ Sinclair. And they move in the chains and risky play by the Mustangs, but it pays off going for it on fourth and four and they get a first down. And that was a good pass on that sideline and he hung on to it just long enough to stay in bounds and then got out of bounds quickly. That'll stop the clock. Stops the clock at 7-12 and it keeps the drive alive. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 48 yard line. They go with a pistol formation, two receivers spread to the left, two out to the right. That'd be a good time for another one of them turnovers. They're passing it again, this time is incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Jamie Morris, Brendan Alexander in on the defense over there on the, the far sideline. Second and 10. And he threw it into double coverage there. And just not to any double coverage, some of our best defensive backs, Brandon Alexander and Jamie Morris, both stellar at their positions. Yeah, Forest City lucky that that one was incomplete instead of an interception. 7.08 on the clock. Clock stopped because of the incomplete pass. A second down and 10. Daquan Scott, the quarterback. The man has shown he can throw the football. He gets to the running back, dive right up the middle, and Good gain. He is brought down by Blake Brown, but he gains six. It's going to be sec. It's going to be third down and four. Again from the pistol formation, Daquan Scott, the quarterback. Nettleton's going to rush four. They give to the running back up the middle, and he is hit immediately by Blake Brown. Blake Brown makes the stop. No gain on the play. Maybe he might have got a yard forward progress before Blake shoved him back, but it's going to be fourth down and three and a half, fourth down and three for the Mustangs. That's a good job by Blake Brown. There's the reason he's all stayed. He shoots the gap hard, finds the runner, and takes him down easily. Good job, Blake Brown. So with the ball on the Raider 45 yard line, the Mustangs electing to go for it once again on fourth down. Raider Nation comes alive over here and encouraging the defense to get a big stop. Fourth down and three. They're gonna pass. The pass is complete to number four and he's got some running room. He's across the 15, the 10, into the end zone. Touchdown, Forest City. That's number four, Rashad Washington. That's a good catch there by Washington. He, he, he caught it in coverage and he broke 
two or three tackles. That's a good little play by Forest City. Good job, Mustangs. Yeah, good pass there by Daquan Scott, and that makes the score 20 to six. And they're gonna go for two. Two point conversion is no good as Jordan Pegram makes the tackle. Short of the of the end zone. 5.45 remaining in the first half. The score is Nettleton 20, Forest City 6. Back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Don't let your credit stop you from getting your next vehicle. Drive your deal to the max at a dealer financing you. Automax of Jonesboro. Hi folks, Craig Stone here. If you need to upgrade your ride, don't worry about your pass. Come to Automax. At Automax, we have financing to fit your budget with affordable monthly payments and low down payments. Give us a call at 870-934-9200 or speed up your approval by applying online at AutomaxJonesboro.com. And hey, we buy cars too, even if you don't buy ours. So if you're looking to buy new, give us a chance to buy yours and ensure you get the most out of your trading. Automax, financing you. And we welcome you to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network as Forest City has just gotten on the board for the first time tonight. With 5.45 remaining in the second quarter, your score is Nettleton 20, Forest City 6. A, what we believe to be a 41-yard touchdown pass from Daquan Scott to Roshad Washington. Number four was the man who caught the pass and broke some tackles and scampered all the way to the end zone. Two point conversion is no good, but the Mustangs are making a statement with that drive that they're here to, um, they're here to play tonight. They're not in here just to take a beating. They intend to, to play some tackle football. Went for it two times on fourth down in that drive and they got two fourth down conversions. I guess the uh, the touchdown was on a fourth down. I think it was. Fourth down and three and, and they convert and then some. The kickoff is away. Q Thompson fields it at about the 20 yard line. Q still on his feet, makes a move. He's across the 40, the 45, and he is brought down just shy of the 50 yard line. They're gonna mark him down at the 47. Was hit hard there, but he's up on his feet. Doing just fine, thankfully. Q is a very important part of this team. Don't want him to be injured on a kickoff return, but love the way he ran that thing hard. Nettleton with good field position. They're gonna start this drive first and 10 at their own 47. And that's a good uh, kickoff return by Q Thompson. He got it really good yardage for the Raider offense to take over. Maddox Hampton back to work. He gives to Keandre Pope, and the play is whistled dead before he can get going good. Flag down and gonna be a line of scrimmage penalty, either false start or offsides against the defense. Let's see what the man in the white hat says. Referees converting. Conferring, I should say. Right now they're not converting anything. It is a penalty against Forest City. He put his hand over his heart like he was saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know exactly what that penalty is. Maybe some, kind of, some type of equipment malfunction. Not sure, but it's a five-yard penalty. And it's going to be first down and five. The ball on the Mustang 48-yard line. Mad Dog gives to the Pope. Pope busted out right side, is tripped up, falls forward to the 45-yard line. It's going to be about three yards short of the first down. It's going to be second down and three. That's a good run by Keandre Pope. He busted outside of the offensive line because there's no hole really, and that's just a good run. Found some extra yardage that wasn't there. Second down and three for the Raiders. Maddox Hampton and Keandre Pope in the backfield. Spread out wide left is Braylon King. Fred Atkins also into the game. Curtis Smith spread out to the right, and they blow the whistles once again. We'll see if which way this one goes. It's 
The line judge is the one who, who threw the flag, the line judge closest to us. It's going to be a false start false against start the Raiders. So what was a second down and three all of a sudden becomes a second down and eight, and the ball is back in Nettleton territory at the 49-yard line. So second down and eight for the Raiders on their own 49. The Mad Dog, Maddox Sampton, in the shotgun. In the backfield with them is Keandre Pope. He gives to the Pope. Pope hit in the backfield, and he's tackled for a loss. The first Mustang there is Joshua Patillo. It's going to be a loss of a yard and a half, a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and nine for the Raiders. And that was a good job by that Forest City defense that came through the line hard. Good job by Joshua Batillo. So third down and nine for the Raiders. Three receivers spread out wide left. And that's an offsides against Forest City. One of the interior linemen just uh, trying to get a little bit of a head start there. Ball had not been snapped yet. He started his forward motion. You cannot do that. They whistle you every time for that. And it'll be third down and four for the Raiders, which is better than third down and nine, which is what it was before that particular infraction. Third down and four for the Raiders. The Mad Dog. Maddox Hampton, the quarterback. Nettleton with a 20 to six lead here with 4.15 remaining in the second quarter of play. Maddox back to pass, it's a screen pass intended for Curtis Smith, incomplete. And it's gonna bring up fourth down and four. We'll see if Nettleton elects to punt or if they elect to go for it. Looks like they're gonna send their punt team out. So for the first time all night, Forest City's defense, Stops the Raiders' offense, and Curtis Smith out to punt. He's standing on his own 39-yard line. Sidney Owens back deep for the Mustangs. High snap, fielded by Curtis. Punt is fielded at the 20, and boy, he is hammered immediately. That is Kylan Shelton with the tackle, and a. He met him as soon as he caught that ball. He was trying to, to make a return. Kylan Shelton said, I think I'm going to keep you from doing that. Heck of an open field tackle there by Kylan Shelton. It's going to be first and 10 Mustangs from their own 21-yard line. And Kylan Shelton does a good job all year on open field tackles. We've been saying his name all season. Good job, Kylan Shelton. Nettleton with a 20-6 lead, 3.57 remaining in the second quarter. Raider defense should have something to prove on this drive as they gave up a touchdown on the last drive. Something that Forest City has not done very often this year, score touchdowns. But they did against the Raider defense the last drive and something tells me the Raider defense gonna be playing with a little extra grit here this particular series. Quarterback with a keeper runs it up the middle Gains about six, seven yards. It's going to be second down and three. And that's a good run by Daquan Scott. Really physical run for a quarterback. Good job, Scott. Yeah, he was, didn't find any receiver that was open, so he decided he's going to run it himself and got seven yards. Scott, the quarterback, he's going to pass again. Pump fake. He is hit. Right as he threw it, and it in and out of the hands of Roshad Washington. Incomplete pass. Roshad was wide open, and the ball hit him in the hands right about the oval end in midfield. That would have been prob that would have been problem for the Raiders if he would have hauled that one in. Thankfully, he dropped the pass, and now it's third down and three. And we know Washington can have a great run after catch as he scored the first touchdown, and that could have been havoc. Good thing he dropped that one. So third down and three. Big play here for the Raider defense. And Mustangs able to get something going offensively on the last drive. Let's stuff them right here, fellas. Squat. Scott gives to the running back, and he is tackled by Cohen Liggins at about the 30-yard line. That's short of the first down. Good job there by Cohen coming up and making the play. 
It's going to be fourth down and one at the 30, and let's see if Forest City elects to go for it. It looks like they're going to punt. I say it looks like that they're going to punt. They're sending, they're sending several new guys in, but it's, their offense is still out there. So they're going to go for it and timeout on the field. Timeout for City. We will take that timeout with them with 2.46 remaining in the second quarter. Your score is Nettleton 20, Forest City 6. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Halloween is just around the corner, so make American Made General Store your ultimate candy stop. The name says it all. Everything you see in our store is manufactured in America, including our candy Indy. Come in today and get your new shipment of gummy eyeballs, gummy body parts, juju pumpkins, and chocolate-covered Halloween pretzels. American-made General carries over 5,000 American-made products from almost every state. Come shop one of our locations in Pocahontas, Brooklyn, Rogersville, and Conway for your next trick-or-treat. We welcome you back to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Nettleton up 20 to 6 with 2.46 remaining in the second quarter. It's fourth down and one for the Mustangs. Ball on the net on their own 30, and they're electing to go for it once again here on fourth down. And that's a false start against Forest City. I thought it might be a, a hard count. Usually the hard count fools the defense. This time it fooled the offense. An offensive lineman jumped off sides, and instead of fourth and one, it's now fourth and six. And now they will surely send their punt team out. This is fourth and six from the 25-yard line, and Nettleton sends their punt return team out. Curtis Smith will be the deep man. Love to see them punt the ball to number five, see what the playmaker can do. He's standing on his own 45-yard line. Nettleton will be bringing 10 in on the rush, a block punt. I wouldn't be opposed to that right now either, would you? I wouldn't either. He gets the punt off and it is directly to Curtis. Fields it at about the 43. Curtis across midfield. And he is brought down at the 44 yard line. A good open field tackle over there by Jamonte Flanoy. There's a flag on the play. There's a flag on the play and Curtis is still down over there. Let's see, now he's getting up. Now, I bet you there was some taunting going on. Another flag is thrown. So the Curtis was tackled over there by the Forest City sideline and probably some uh, extracurricular activity in the form of some taunting little celebration after a good open field tackle. But it's going to cost them. And let's, Curtis, the good news is Curtis is just fine. He's walking under his own power and seems to, be showing no ill effects from that tackle. The officials in conference standing just to the other side of the oval end, trying to figure out exactly what to call. There's two flags down. One, stand, one is laying on the oval end. The other is on the far sideline. I see three flags. One on the R40, there's two on the 45. Okay. One close to us, one on the end, and one on that far Forest City sideline. So multiple flags, multiple infractions, and they are getting their heads together. They're going to give their report to us here in just a second. Nettleton leads the game 20 to 6. A game that has been contentious from the get go. Early in the first quarter, the very first drive, there was unsportsmanlike conduct penalties called. And now the man in the white hat, well, he started to say he's, he's ready to give the indication to us, but he, they huddle back up. And the referees are taking their time getting the call right. So the man in the white hat is blocking the back against the Raiders. That penalty is declined. Personal foul against the Raiders. Well, let's see what in the world. Sideline warning against Forest City. So a couple of blocking, if I read that right, a couple of blocking the back 
penalties, and they said it was against the Raiders, which would make sense as they are the returning team. They haven't stepped off, and now they're going to step it off. Yeah, they're going to step it off. It's a spot foul, I believe a 10-yard from the spot of the foul. So they will back it up to the Nettleton 42-yard line. That's where the Raiders will take over first and 10. 2.06 remaining here in the second quarter. Nettleton up 20 to six in a game that has been marred by a lot of yellow fabric flying through the night. Maddox Hampton, the quarterback in the gun. Screen pass to Curtis Smith. He makes a couple of Mustangs miss and now he's off to the races. Across the 40, the 30 yard line, he's shoved out of bounds after a big time gain. Great run by Curtis Smith. That's a good run after the catch. Good little screen pass. He had a couple blockers and he got really good yardage there. About to the 31 yard line. Good run by Curtis Smith. And a must, couple of Mustangs are going to need to pick up their undergarments at about the 50 because that's where Curtis faked them off. First and 10 for the Raiders at the Mustang 31 yard line. A heck of a run by the playmaker after the catch. Play is whistled dead, and it's going to be a timeout for a city with 157 remaining in the second quarter. Nettleton with a 20 to 6 lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Now you can enjoy the great taste of Japan in downtown Jonesboro. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine has all your favorites from steak and chicken to seafood and sushi. Bamboo also has house poke bowls, or you can build your own bowl. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine with hibachi, sushi, and seafood is open Monday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and discounts are available for students. So stop by and dine in with us, or log on to BambooJapaneseCuisine.com and like them on Facebook. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine on the corner of Maine and Huntington in downtown Jonesboro. We welcome you back to Raider Field. The class of 2012 having their 10 year reunion. They're in the house tonight, and right now they're liking what they're seeing as their Raiders are beating Forest City by the score of 20 to 6. We're in the second quarter, one minute and 57 seconds remaining. And Nettleton with the ball, first and 10 on the Mustang 31 yard line. Nettleton received the opening kickoff, so they will be kicking the ball off to start the second half. I bet they would like to score before the intermission. Maddox Sampton from the gun. He's passing. It is complete, incomplete rather, to Q Thompson. Q hauled it in. It was hit immediately. Did not ever really have control. Incomplete pass, and Q is a little bit slow getting up. Has his helmet off, and the trainer over there checking on Q as he was hit hard. and. There is a flag on the play as well. Yeah, may, may be targeting. May be targeting. Let's hope that Q is all There's right. A flag on the play. That's the primary consideration. Coach yep. Hampton is out to check on the Nettleton Raider leading receiver. And Q's a guy you don't want to see out. He's a really good player, really good athlete. No doubt about it. A game like this where you're expected to win, you're expected to win big, the absolute worst thing that can happen well, the worst thing that can happen, I guess, is you lose the game. That's bad. But the worst thing that happens is if uh, one of your main playmakers goes down with injury. And that is uh, definitely something we're hoping is not the case right here. Q Thompson is on the turf, and the training staff, is, uh, is, as well as Coach Hampton and Coach Wilson over there checking on him. There is a flag lying about eight yards away from Q, and the referees we st have still not given an indication what the penalty is. I think they're waiting to make sure that Q is attended to first. Now the Mustangs are going over to their sideline, and the Raiders are coming over to our sideline. Initially, it looked like a it looked like Q was was all right and even trying to get up, but then rolled back over and that's where he is right now, 
on the turf lying on his back. The referee's over talking to the Forest City head coach. But he has not given us an indication yet as to what the penalty is all about. He was sitting up. That's a very good sign. His helmet was knocked off of him. and Looks like some members of his family are going out to check on him. And you can certainly understand their concern for, for Q. Still no indication as to what the, the flag is. But Q is sitting up, and that is very good news. Now he is up on his feet, receiving a nice round of applause from the Raider faithful. What an important part of this team this young man is, Q Thompson. He is a great possession receiver, a great deep threat. All year long we've seen the Mad Dog air the ball out and Q Thompson run under it and make just circus catches, sensational catches. The leading receiver on the team, and he is – Walking off the field, walking slowly, walking gingerly. Members of his family, I'm assuming, that's out there helping him and getting a nice round of applause from the Raider faithful. He does seem to be walking all right, just walking kind of slowly. And the penalty is going to be against Forest City. He was back to the sideline and will be keeping an eye on him and doing our best to let you know exactly the situation. But I didn't see the man in the white hat give the indication, but obviously it's a penalty against Forest City. First and ten Raiders, and Mad Dog Hampton gives to the Pope. Pope running right up the middle across the 15-yard line, spins his way across the ten. Good effort there by the Pope. Going to be close to the first down. Gain of... Eight yard lines, it's gonna be second down and two for the Raiders. Ball on the nine yard line of the Mustangs, 129 remaining in the second quarter. They give again to the Pope. The Pope finds the hole and is brought down inside the five yard line. First down for the Raiders. It's gonna be first down and goal to go from the three yard line. Nettleton with a hurry up. Give it to the Pope, once again running up the middle, and he has stopped short of the, of the goal line. Clock will roll, 107. He got to the line of scrimmage before he was stopped, so it's gonna be second down and goal to go from the three. 55 seconds on the clock and ticking. Nettleson trying to score, add to their 20 to six lead right here before half. Curtis Smith in at quarterback. Curtis is going to keep it himself. And he is brought down for a short loss at the five-yard line. It's going to be third down and goal to go. Nettleton will elect to take a timeout. With 36 seconds remaining in the second quarter, Nettleton trying to punch it in to uh, add to their 20-6 to six lead. We'll take a 30-second break. When we come back, We'll have the final seconds of the second quarter. Nettleton up 20 to six. You've tuned in to, N to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. A-State football and the Social Jones Roll are the perfect winning combination for game day. The Social has an amazing, delicious, fantastic, and tasty menu that goes perfect for pre- or post-game. Plus, the official Red Wolves away game watch party takes place at the Social. What we're saying is, it does not get any better than the Social on Red Wolves game day. The name says it all. Get Social at the Social and get ready to howl with fellow A-State Red Wolves fans on every game day. The Social at Greensboro Village in Jonesboro. We welcome you back to Raider Field, where the Nettleton Raiders have the ball third down and goal to go from the four yard line of the Mustangs. Trying to score before halftime, 36 seconds to go. Before the intermission, Maddox Hampton back out at quarterback. He's got the Pope to his right hip, rolling out right. He's passing is complete into the end zone. Touchdown, Braylon King, touchdown Raiders. 
And that was a good play design there by Coach Wilson. Maddox rolling out while Cortez comes in motion the other way. Good catch, though, by Braylon King. He found him right there on an out route. Good throw, good catch. Touchdown, Raiders. It's good to be the King. Braylon King, who had a huge reception last year in the win over uh, Southside to keep a drive alive. And this time they go to Braylon King. And number three gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Joseph Newhung on for the extra point. It is up and it is good with 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Our score is now Nettleton 27, Forest City 6. Back in 30 seconds and more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Demo Smokehouse Barbecue on Johnson at Hilltop and on Main Street across from Jonesboro High School. Now, I'm from Memphis, and I know barbecue, but there are people from Memphis that travel to Jonesboro to sample, taste, and enjoy Demo's Barbecue. No kidding. They come from Memphis, so no need to go anywhere else. Right here, the best barbecue is at Demo's. Any of the ribs, any of the plates, you can enjoy it all at Demo's Smokehouse Barbecue. My mouth is watering. Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Nettleton with a 27-6 lead over Forest City with 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Very concerned right now about Q Thompson, who was knocked out of the game. I believe that was a targeting call that was called against him. He is being checked out. He's, he is uh, standing on his own power, of course, and is being checked out by Nick, our trainer. It looks like he's kind of going through some concussion uh, protocol with him. And Q is... Hopefully okay, and we'll hopefully see him tonight. And we sure want to see him next week as we travel to Valley View for a big conference 5A East showdown with incredible playoff implications. Antonio Almarez kicks the ball over the head, a nice over-the-shoulder catch there by the deep man. He gets it across the 20-yard line, and then he is brought down just shy of the 30. Making the tackle for Nettleton is Caleb Tedder. 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. That's all the time that Forest City will have here in the first half to get some points on the board. Forest City will receive the kickoff in the second half. It's going to be first and 10 Mustangs from their own 29-yard line. That's where they will start the drive. Middleton led 13 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Then 20 to nothing after they scored the first points of the second quarter. Forest City got on the board and Middleton answered 27 to six to score right now with 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The play is whistled dead. A lot of official stoppage in this game. This game seems like, this first half seems like it has taken forever. Started off with the opening kickoff. There was two or three equipment infractions that they had to get situated before we could even start the game. Now they're ready. And the Forest City quarterback just elects to take a knee and let the clock roll out. They're content to go into the halftime with a 27 to six lead. So I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's take a, a five minute break, a five minute break. When we come back, we will have the halftime show brought to you by, more, uh, by Kavanaugh Auto Group. Kavanaugh Auto Group to see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home. Log on to KavanaughCars.com. Our special guest on the halftime show is going to be Nettleton CTE Academy Principal Rashad Sims. He's going to be dropping some knowledge on us. So we'll take a five-minute break, and when we come back, we will have totals, highlights, stats, and Rashad Sims. It's coming up on the Kavanaugh Auto Halftime Show. Back in five with that. You've tuned in to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. 
Your vehicle is a personal and important investment. At Central Collision Center, we're more than collision repair. We do everything from minor paint touch-ups and windshield replacements to framework. We're committed to customer satisfaction and provide the highest quality of service. At Central Collision Center, we provide honest and expert auto care and offer a written lifetime warranty and on-site rental car arrangements. Stop by or give us a call today to schedule your free estimate. Central Collision Center, professional, convenient, reliable. Find Central Chevrolet on Stadium and online at centralcollisionctr.com. Whether you're replacing an old appliance or remodeling your whole kitchen, the appliances you need are right around the corner with GE Appliances at Tucker's Appliance Superstore in Jonesboro. Shop timeless designs and time-saving features on the appliances that are built to last in the busiest homes. Visit Tucker's Appliance today and upgrade your home your way with GE Appliances and your local experts. Shop Tucker's Appliance today and save. Tucker's Appliance. Pico Food says good luck to all the players, coaches, cheerleaders, and marching bands taking the field tonight. Under the lights, it's not about who's in your path, it's about who's in your huddle. And Pico Foods is a proud teammate and supporter of local communities and the state's agricultural producers. Learn more about Pico Foods' mission to support producers in Arkansas and Missouri by calling David Durham or James Chester, 870-202-7101. In Alabama, Mississippi, call Craig Bird or John Taylor Hickman, 601-670-9383. Twenty-five years of memories, 25 years of smiles, opportunities, and friends. 25 years of community. Because of you, we've forged long-lasting partnerships that have made our communities better. We can all agree that a lot has changed in 25 years, but our promise to always be a true community bank remains the same. Our roots run deep. Our commitment to you runs deeper. We are celebrating 25 years of First Community Bank, and the best is yet to come. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Your medical needs are personal, and the way you manage those needs should be personal as well. The team at Southern Home Healthcare is local, knowledgeable, and courteous, giving you the customer customized care you and your family deserve. When facing breathing challenges, the on-staff respiratory therapists at Southern Home Healthcare provide support and guidance just for you, and you can sleep better with the help of their CPAP and BiPAP therapy. Plus, treat your strains, sprains, and pain with the help of Southern Home Healthcare's high-quality bracing devices. Go online to southernhomehealthjonesboro.com. No matter what the season, it's always a great time to go to Wings to Go. Whether it's football, whether it's basketball, whether it's baseball, whether it's wrestling, whether it's anything, the wings, the salads, the hamburgers, everything they have at Wings to Go is always flavorful and it's always ready. All that has to happen is you come down and enjoy them. Happy winging from Wings to Go. Follow me on a new healthcare journey full of possibilities. Experience world class care delivered by friends, family, and neighbors right here in your community, bringing industry leading technology to you, not the other way around. Your health record, your appointment scheduling, and your medications all in one place, and your lab results delivered the instant they're recorded. Do we look at healthcare differently? Absolutely. Experience the difference, and you will too. NEA Baptist. Healthcare for the next century. Bump it up at First National Bank. Now offering two CD specials with competitive interest and a one time bump during the original term of the CD with no penalty. That means if you sign up and the rate goes up, you can bump it up. A 16 month CD at 2.51% annual percentage yield or a 26 month CD at 3.01% APY. Visit fnbank.net slash specials to lock in your rate today. Offer valid as of 9 28 2022. Penalty for early withdrawal. $1,000 minimum opening balance to open. Rates subject to change. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Get huge savings now at every Kavanaugh dealership. Kavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have every every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Kavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy cars. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to CavanaughCars.com. The home team at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is proud to welcome Dr. Asa Schneichel. Dr. Schneichel's an Ace State alum and is Northeast Arkansas's only joint revision surgeon, specializing in several forms of joint replacement. He joins the Jonesboro Sports and Orthopedics team with more than 40 years' experience in getting you back in the game. So if you have a sports injury, just some nagging aches, or even need help with concussion management, call JOSM at 932-1820 to schedule an appointment. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in our field so you can excel on yours. 
And we welcome you back to Nettleton Raider Field where the Raiders have a 27 to six lead over Forest City. And we wanna welcome you to the Kavanaugh Auto Group Halftime Show brought to you by Kavanaugh. To see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home, just log on to Kavanaugh Cars Com. Our special guest is Rashad Sims. He's the CTE principal at Nettleton, and we'll get to our conversation with Mr. Sims here in just a second. Before we do, though, let's catch you up on the uh, on the game. Nettleton leads 27-6. to six. They got the scoring started early. Their first drive, a 24-yard touchdown pass from the Mad Dog Maddox Hampton to the playmaker, Curtis Smith, with 9.21 remaining in the first quarter. The score was 6 to nothing. The PAT was no good, so the score remained 6-0. Nettleton scored again with 4.26 remaining in the first quarter. Curtis Smith, a 35-yard touchdown run. The PAT was good this time that made the score 13 to 0. The second quarter the hits kept on coming for the Raider offense. The Mad Dog Maddox Hampton, he hit a young man who scored his first touchdown tonight. Adrian Blackburn, Adarian Blackburn, AD Blackburn is what they call him and AD Got into the end zone with 8.51 remaining in the second quarter. The PAT was good. The score was 20 to nothing. That's when Forest City responded with, by my stats, about a 41-yard touchdown pass from the quarterback, Daquan Scott, to his playmaker, Roshad Washington. And most of that 41 yards was a run after the catch with 5.45 remaining in the second quarter. That gave, that put Forest City on the board. The score was 20 to six. The two point conversion was no good. Jordan Pegram made a stop that saved those two points from being tacked upon the scoreboard. Nettleton put the final score of the half into the end zone with 33 seconds remaining. The Mad Dog Maddox Hampton hit Braylon King is good to be the king with a four yard touchdown pass. The PAT is good and that made the score 27 to six and that's where we stand right now. Looking at the stats um, unofficially as uh, these stats were put together by our man Jeff McMillan in the next booth over. We appreciate Jeff doing that. Maddox Hampton has 95 yards uh, passing. His receivers, Braylon King has a touchdown um, at four receiving yards, I believe is what this indicates. The um, Keandre Pope, 97 yards rushing. Curtis Smith, 51 yards rushing and 57 yards receiving. Two touchdowns for Curtis, one receiving, one uh, rushing. Number 13, Q Thompson has 33 yards receiving, and A.D. Blackburn has 11 yards and one touchdown. And as we said, Nettleton with a 27-6 lead here at the half. We are joined in the booth by Mr. Rashad Sims, who serves as Nettleton CTE Academy principal. Mr. Sims, thank you for being a part of the halftime show today. Craig, thanks for having me. You bet. Now, let's, um, obviously, I know you. I work with you, but not everybody out there listening knows Rashad Sims. So, tell us, where are you from? Where did you go to high school? We'll start right there. I'm actually from southwest West Arkansas, a little town called Stamps, Arkansas. Some people may re relate that to my Angelo. Yep. Um, graduated from the Fayette County High School. Uh, Stamps had consolidated with Louisville High School in May 1. Went to University of, uh, Southern Arkansas University at Mule Riders uh, in Magnolia, Arkansas, where my mom works there as well. Kind of had no choice to go, uh, to go anywhere else, go anywhere else but there. Uh, got my undergrad and my bachelor's from uh, my bachelor's and my master's from there. Then I uh, moved up here and got my specialist from ASU as a Red Wolf. Um, I've coached for I coached for ten years, and now I'm in a second year admin here at Nettleton. So gotcha. you, it's been it's been a it's been a ride. You've run through half my questions with that one answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the voice of Rashad Sims. And let's go back to your high school days. You say you're from Stamps. I don't know if you knew it or not, but uh, I've got some southwest Arkansas roots to me. My mom is from Texarkana, okay. Arkansas, which is not far at all from, from nope. Stamps. It's right up the road. Just so. a hop skip. That's right. Without the jump. <laughs> That's right. Now, I know you played football in high school. Did you play any other sports? I threw the shot putting discus in, in okay. track and field, so. Football and track. And you said you went to uh, college where? Southern Arkansas University, home of the Mule Riders. Home of the Mule Riders. you play football there? No, sir, I did not. I just became a student of the game and 
which led me into coaching. Hey, that's that's my next question. What made you decide to go into coaching? Were there some uh, some coaches or some teachers that made an especially big impact on your life? It actually started as a um, as a seventh grader with uh, Coach Tiger Roberts. He he was my my junior high coach, seventh grade coach actually, and uh, just he the drive and, and the motivation that he gave me and. And I was never just the biggest guy. Actually, when I came through high school, I was the smallest lineman we had at 5'8". <laughs> my left tackle was 6'3". Uh, six, six, my center was 6'4". My classmate, the right guard, was 6'5". They all went on to play college football. Um, the right tackle was 6'5". Two went to OBU and one played at SAU. So um, just the drive he gave me and, and, and not shooing me away but because I wasn't the biggest, but pushing me, and, and I fed off that. and. I said, one day I want to make that same impact on, on athletes as well and students in general. I love it. You know, coaches do that. that that's Mr. Sims, Rashad Sims, our, our guest here on the Kevin Auto Group Halftime Show. Coaches do that. They impact people. Uh, the great evangelist Billy Graham once famously said that a coach will impact more people in one season than most people will their entire lifetime. I yes. mean, what a, uh, what a tremendous um, – responsibility and what a tremendous job occupation that these guys have as, as coaches hey, it is a blessing it is a blessing to be a coach um I, I don't take it take it for granted i don't take them for granted the job that they do and, and the hours that they put in it's it's unseen by many you know and 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 i, I wish people would really understand what what coaches go through day in and day out year in and year out you know the mental the mental breakdown that, that it has on you sometimes and also the the, the, I guess the uplifting part of it is when you win, when you when you reap the benefits. Yes, sir. And winning is a whole lot more fun than losing. You, you got that right. That's for sure. Rashad Sims, our guest here on the Kavanaugh Auto Group's Halftime Show. Coach, I know you, you hit on this a little bit earlier, but walk me through your coaching career. Uh, what stops did you make before arriving at Nettleton? And you've been at Nettleton before, left us and came back. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. Actually, coming out of college, I went home for three years. Uh, coached O line, D line there, and I was the head girls track coach. Uh, then I left there and went to Mineral Springs, which was actually a rival of my hometown, um, and became the uh, O line, D line coach there as well, but head boys coach. And just it was more of a monetary thing there, uh, just to be honest. And then I went to 5A, the 5A level in Magnolia, chasing that head coaching dream, which obviously it never came. But I still chased it and went to Magnolia with Coach John Painter, who's now the D.C. at Cabot, um, and has them rolling to, uh, this year as well. Um, then left Magnolia and came here at Nettleton for a year and went to be the assistant head coach at Southwest, opening up the brand-new school in Southwest Little Rock. Yeah. And, you know, things went the way they went and had the opportunity to come back and – and it's great to be a Raider. Yes, it is. We're glad to have you back. It's uh, not this year, but last year you returned back to Nettleton as a, a brand new position, a position that's never been um, had here before at Nettleton. As we moved to the academy models, and you are the principal of the CTE Academy. Now, tell us what exactly is CTE? What does that stand for? That's Career and Technical Education Academy. Um, Pretty much, it's, it's all your courses, including yours, the um, trade and industry uh, courses like uh, T Nettleton TV, uh, criminal justice. Um, uh, we got CNA classes, the health science classes, um, FFA, AGRI. Well, FFA is the club, but AGRI is the class. And then we have um, just a number of things that we do within CTE. With, we're partnering with people outside of the school, local, the local community, and. Um, we actually have some big things coming up with the uh, Be Pro Be Proud coming in the spring. We had yeah, draft yeah. draft day back on uh, October fourth, where they brought the um, ATV, uh, not the eighteen wheeler simulator yes. here uh, on job on the job training, basically what it is for our students and love it. Just trying to present as many opportunities as we possibly can to our students, and not everyone's going to college. We're, we're accept right. we're accepting that, and, yeah. and I'm not saying that going to college is wrong because I did it, sure. you know, and, and it's been good to me, but. I want to also not be blind to those that maybe college is not for. Sure. And put something in front of them that they could 
do and make a whole lot of money and have fun doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you said it exactly right. College is not for every one of our students. And I think we're doing a disservice if we if we try to make kids feel guilty they're not going to college. There's some good young men and women over there that college is just not for. My son is one of them. Um, Kobe told us over a year ago, he said, I just do not want to go to college. He wanted to uh, to uh, learn a trade, wants to be an electrician, wants to be an HVAC guy. And we were thrilled with that and I'm so thankful that uh, Nettleton is, uh, is has got this CTE push career technical education push it is a it is a great thing you seem to be very excited to be here I, I'm very excited Craig and uh, I, I think if I'm not mistaken didn't Kobe per, uh, participate in the forklift training he did that we did last year he is forklift certified and, and we're actually looking forward to doing that again this year and it's, it's a big thing and we have the Educators externship is another thing that we're doing November 9th and 10th, where we uh, take some of our, our educators and stuff in the district, not just the high school, and get them into the local uh, industries and local manufacturers and basically show them what's inside these manufacturers from the lowest job to the highest job that they have to offer so that our educators can bring it, then bring it back to our students and help identify those students that will fit those roles. I love it. You know, another program that falls under that CTE umbrella that I'm very impressed with here at Nettleton is our nursing uh, program, Miss Klein. Man, she does a wonderful job yes, with that program. Yes, she does. I'm, 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 we have some great teachers at Nettleton. And, and, and I'm pretty biased when it comes to the CTE, of course. Um, my group is very special, and, and they, they work very hard in what they do and, and present so many opportunities and bring so many people into, into the classroom for our students to, to see, and it's, it's, it's great. Great it, things are happening. It really is. You send your kid to Nettleton, and they're going to get the opportunity to have some real-world education, and, man, that's valuable. It, yes. it really is. Mr. Rashad Sims, the CTE Academy principal, is our guest on the uh, on the Kavanaugh Auto Group halftime show. We're about uh, probably five minutes away from kickoff. So let me ask you this, uh, Coach. Um, I know you you will always be coach to me. When I first met you, you were coach. And I, I find myself calling you coach still, which is a term of endearment. I mean, that's a, that's a high compliment to be called a coach. Yes, sir. But I know it's uh, that coaching hat will always be on you. Looking at this Raider team so far this season, what do you think about our football team? I think that we are – we lost a lot last year, and I think this team is really exceeding – probably the expectations of a lot of people yep and i'm i'm proud to see that and and that our kids and coaches are have have been putting themselves in position to be successful and because a lot of a lot of noise was going around as if we weren't be as good we weren't be as good as we were last year and i i think our kids have, have touched the naysayers yeah yeah and and that's that's a big thing and and that's just what raiders do Yes, I love it. And that speaks to the, the culture and the tradition that Coach Hampton has really built here, that these kids go out there, they expect to win. Yes. Every Friday night, uh, and at times past, and I've been a Nettleton Raider my whole life, but at times past I've seen teams out there and they just kind of expect to lose. I hate to say it, not this bunch. I mean, they go out there every Friday night, it's like we're going to win this game. We're gonna, and, and they have done so um, – very frequently this season and last season. So proud of them for sure. As they stand here at week eight, they stand six and one. If they can hold on to this 27 to six lead, they'll be seven and one. Now, did you coach this group when they were ninth graders? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I did. It was a very fun group. Um, I got them actually in the off season. Okay. That's when I got them. I didn't, I didn't get to coach them during the season, um, but they still remember the off season that, that, that we went through and it was, it was very exciting. And I think it propelled them to be where they are now and, and not take anything from coach, co coaches now. And they have – Coach Hampton has put together a very well staff. Yes. He has a great staff. And and they are putting our kids in the best position to win and, and making adjustments as, on the fly. And our kids are making adjustments with alongside the coaches. And it's just great to see – what is being built here at Nettleton. It is a great time to be a Raider, that's for sure. Last night, the the uh, junior high game, as the Valley View Junior Blazers came to take on our Nettleton Junior High Raiders. What a game that was. That was a great game, and I'm, I'm glad I, I signed up to have duty. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have missed it, though. I, I, I told my uh, fiance that I was going to be here with them to support, and, and our kids faced a little adversity. We hadn't been down all year, and 
and they overcame it and, and ended up conference champs, and that's, that's big. Now we got to go finish the deal and win in a couple of weeks. That's right. Let's get outright conference champs for sure. Hey, uh, you mentioned a word there that I want to uh, pursue a little bit. You say fiancé. You're about to get married. Yes, sir, I am. I'm actually getting married in November to my fiancé. She, she's the assistant principal at Nettleton Junior High. I love it. I love it. And her name? Miss Kara Greer is her name. Yeah, we better give her a shout-out. Yes, sir. You gotta, gotta love you, Kara. Stay in her good graces for sure. The assistant principal at Nettleton Junior High. Looking forward to that, man. Congratulations on the upcoming nuptials. And, and congratulations just being here at Nettleton. We're so glad to have you, Mr. Sims. Glad to have you as a, as a part of the Raider family. Glad one, to be here. Once again. Hey, before we let you go, what do you think about the game so far tonight? It's been a, it's been a good game to me so far. And, and I know – the head coach, Coach Lewis, I know the defense coordinator from Forest City. He's actually from Hope, Arkansas. We're, okay. we're, we're all from the same, pretty yep. much the same cloth, you know. And, yep. and, I, and we talked, and they, they're, they're trying to build something over there. And he, he got the kids playing hard over there. It's just, they do. Raiders is just a little too much for him, and and I and I'm I'm biased like you, Craig, when it comes to that Raider pride. Raider pride forever. That's what I say. And you know, another thing, I'm biased toward the Turbo Clock. I always root for the Turbo Clock. Right now, we got to uh, help me out with my math. 21 point lead. Yes, sir. So we just need two, two more, more touch touchdowns and extra points and extra points, and we will roll clock roll. Yes, That's sir. what I'm looking forward to. I tell you what, we'll let you go, and I know you got duty to take care of. So thank you so much, Mr. Sims. Thank for, you for, for having joining me. us. You bet you. You bet you. Come back up here anytime. I'm, you remember that day you. You called a baseball game with me? Yes, sir, I did. <laughs> You'll have to come up and join me sometime in the booth again. Man. I will. Thank you. You bet. That's Rashad Sims. He's been our guest on the Kavanaugh Auto Group Halftime Show. We'll take a 90-second break, and when we come back, we'll have the second half for you. Back in oh, – I'll tell you what, let's make it a 60-second break. Back in 60 seconds with more Raider football, the second half on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. You raised your family here. Did every July 4th here – Refinished the floors here twice. Sized up your daughter's boyfriends here. Waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave. This place has given you all you've dreamed of, and now it's giving again in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man. Realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from Simmons Bank. Dreams realized. SimmonsBank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. It's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twists, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole game. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. And we welcome you back to Raider Field where we are getting set to start the second half. Nettleton at the break leads 27 to six over the Forest City Mustangs. Nettleton trying to move to seven and one on the year and they are on their way to doing so. A three touchdown lead and the Raiders got the score and started early. 9-21 remaining in the first quarter. 24-yard touchdown pass from the Mad Dog to Curtis Smith. Curtis scored on a run with 426 remaining in the quarter. Nettleton outscored um, Forest City 13-0 in that first frame. Outscored them 14-6 in the second quarter. Touchdowns, a touchdown pass from the Mad Dog to A.D. And almost called him Burnett again. A.D. Blackburn is that uh, with 851 after the Joseph New Hung PAT made the score 20 to nothing. And then a touchdown pass from the Mad Dog to Braylon King made it 27 to six after the New Hung PAT. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton has thrown three touchdown passes. Cortez has caught one of them, run another one in. A.D. Blackburn with a touchdown, Braylon King with a touchdown. And we are just about to get things underway here in the second half. Nettleton will be kicking off and they will be moving from right to left on your radio dial. Bob FM, a part of the EAB Sports Network on Friday nights. And if you're listening, we're sure glad to have you wherever you may be. And if you've tuned into our YouTube channel, always glad to have you there. Appreciate the NTV crew working hard up here to make the magic happen. Cameron Holder, Jacob Linderman, Colin Culler, the Calebs, Caleb Robinson, Caleb Andrews on camera, and Brandon Troutman also on camera. 
Good NTV crew, good Nettleton football team, a good night here at Nettleton as they lead 27 to six. Antonio Almarez on to kick off, high end over end kick that's filled, filled it at the 20 yard line. And the tackle is made downfield by Nettleton's Bill Bates. I call him the Bill Bates of the Nettleton Raiders. Nathaniel Gonzalez, he has really turned into a special, special teams player. He sure is. He gets a lot of downfield tackles on kickoff return, kick, kickoff covers. Good job, Nathaniel Gonzalez. Another guy's first year he's played football. And then many said a great season, done a very good job. Nathaniel Gonzalez with the stop at the 30 yard line. And that's where Forest City will take over first and 10. Triple H is music playing and it is time to play the game. Nettleton with a 21 point lead here at the outset of the second half. Forest City going to the air, a screen pass. Tackle made over on the far sideline by Miles Williams and Kylan Shelton, a gain of a couple. It's gonna be second down and eight. And that's a good coverage play, a good screen pass. He shuffled out and he was met by two good outstanding defensive backs. Good job by Miles Williams and Kylan Shelton. Dalen Washington in at quarterback for the Mustangs. Pistol formation, that is Willie Murphy in the backfield with him, and the play is whistled dead. You see a flag, Jacob? I don't, but that might be one. The referees are having a little committee meeting over there, and let's see if they I still don't see, now no flag. I guess they just wanted to have a conversation. I don't know. These referees are not realizing that Mr. Miller is old and around this time of night, I want to go to bed. Mustangs are gonna pass. Looking downfield, it is intercepted. Entered. Intercepted by Brandon Alexander. Alexander returning the ball east-west, runs out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. How about that, Jacob? Brandon Alexander with his first interception of the season. Now that's a good interception there, double coverage. The quarterback decided to throw it into, and it found the hands of Brandon Alexander. Good interception, Brandon Alexander. No doubt about it, and the Raiders will take over first and 10, their own 32-yard line after the interception by number four, Brandon Alexander. Coach Bubba Deaton texted me during halftime wondering what percentage of touchdowns come from basketball players. Curtis, Q, Braylon, AD, a high percentage. Let's put it that way. Um, another basketball player, Brandon Alexander, with a big play right there. So Coach Bubba Deaton's Raiders definitely helping out the football team, and I love to see that. The Mad Dog, Maddox Sampton. He's going to pass, run pass option, complete to Caleb Tedder. Caleb Tedder with a couple of hard fought yards, gains a couple. However, I do see a flag on the far sideline. It was thrown by the line judge over there. May have been offsides on the defense, but not 100% sure. If it is offsides on the defense, and nope, it is a um, penalty against the Raiders. Ineligible receiver downfield against the Raiders. So that is a five yard penalty and it'll be a replay of first down. Don't know who would have been an eligible receiver downfield because the play happened so quickly. But I guess it doesn't matter what I think, it's what the referees call, and they called in eligible receiver downfield, so it's gonna be first down and 15 for the Raiders. The ball now on the 25 yard line. Coach Hampton, Coach Wilson asking for an explanation. Curtis Smith in at quarterback. He's standing on the 20 yard line in the shotgun. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. Keandre just under 100 yards rushing and he's not gonna get it on that one as he is wrapped up in the backfield. He might've got to the line of scrimmage, but it's gonna be second down and 15 looks like for the Raiders. 
No that, gain on play. There was not a lot of room to run there. That defensive line came in very fast. Good job by that Mustang defensive line. 10.08 and ticking on the clock. Nettleton with a 21-point lead, 27-6 over the Forest City Mustangs. The Mad Dog, Maddox Sampton, back out at quarterback in the gun. He's dropping back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, intended for Q Thompson, who's back in the game, and that's good news. It's incomplete, that's the bad news, but the good news is Q Thompson's back out there. It sure is, and he's a really good threat for the, our offense, and Q Thompson's the guy you need in the game at all times. It's third down and 15. I sure love to see him back out there. He was taken out of the game, was hit hard, and so they were going through some concussion protocol on the sidelines with him. Everything obviously checked out just fine. Q is doing all right back out there, and that's good news, Raider Nation. First down, excuse me, third down and 15 for the Raiders. The Mad Dog dropping back to pass, looking downfield. It's incomplete, intended for Curtis Smith. That'll bring up fourth down and 15. The Raiders are going to be forced to punt here on their first possession of the second half. And that was just an unfortunate draw by Curtis. If he would have caught that, that had been a run after a catch first down by Curtis. Just unfortunate. Curtis Smith is on to punt. Sydney Owens back deep for Forest City. Buddy Nichols called him something different, but the roster that I have is Sydney Owens. Sydney Owens fumbles it. Picks up his fumble, and good thing for him because he's immediately hit by a couple of Raiders, including Colin Shelton and Caleb Tedder. It's going to be first and ten Mustangs from their own 42, and Forest City really dodged a bullet right there. They sure did. I was hoping that fumble might have been recovered, but he got on that one quickly, and he was met and hammered by Caleb Tedder and Colin Shelton. So it'll be first and 10 Mustangs from their own 42 yard line. The Raider defensive unit back to work. Keon Stallings, Jordan Pegram, Caden Newsom, who made the game saving play last week at Southside as Nettleton escaped with a 13 to 12 win. And the murder man, Cam Phillips, the four man line on the defensive front. They give to the running back, running right up the middle. He's brought down by Jamie Morris, Cohen Liggins. Also in on the stop for Nettleton is Blake Brown. Gain of five, it's gonna be second down and five for Forest City, the ball on their own 47 yard line. And that's a good run there by the running back. He found the hole very well and he got plenty of yards and that sets Forest City up very well. Second down and five for the Mustangs. They give again to the running back, right up the middle. This time he is stopped by Caden Newsom. Also in on the stop, leading the tackle for the Raiders is Blake Brown. How many times have we said that this year? He is able to fall forward and get a couple of yards. It's gonna be third down and two for the Mustangs. Ball run right on the 50 yard line. And that's a good stop by Blake Brown. Only get him, giving the running back a couple of yards. Good job, Blake Brown. Blake Brown and Cohen Liggins, a couple of outstanding middle linebackers for the Raiders this year. Third down and two. Low snap, they give it up the middle, and he's got the first down and then some. He's across the 30. Miles Williams shoves him out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. It's going to be first and 10. Mustangs. Ball's going to be at the 17 yard line after a big gain by number 20, Eddie Williams. That's a good run there by. Eddie Williams, Eddie did a good job of finding a hole and then bouncing it outside. Good run by Eddie. So it'll be first and 10 for the Mustangs at the Raider 18. Give to the running back again, right up the middle and they are, he's inside the 10 yard line to the seven. It's gonna be another first down. It'll be a first down and goal to go this time at the eight yard line. So Forest City moving the ball effectively against this Raider defense. Again, they give the ball up the middle and this time the Raider defensive line up to the task. Keon Stallings, Jordan Pegram leading the tackle for Nettleton. 
Uh, Jamarcus Johnson slow to get up and he crumples down to the field. Jamarcus is in some pain there. Maybe it's just a cramp. He, he got up pretty quickly and was kind of hopping on one foot before he crumpled to the turf. And so they're going to get out there and check on Jamarcus. Jamarcus wears number 60 in honor of Big Larry James from Nettleton's class of 1989. They're checking on Jamarcus and looking at his left leg, lower part of it. Coach Hampton's out there to look at him and now then they're raising it up it doesn't look like it's a cramp it looks like he may have been hit hard in the shin or something I do not know but in any event let's hope that Jamarcus is all right and again this is one of those games you're expected to win you're expected to win big Nettleton is up big 21 points 27 to 6 to score here in the third quarter 745 remaining and Jamarcus is up, and when, what you don't want to happen in a game like this, obviously you want to handle your business. You want to win the game. That's first and foremost. But you don't want anybody to get hurt. You sure don't want Jamarcus injured, and he is walking off the field under his own power. A little bit slowly, I would say, but he is making it, and I have a feeling you ain't, you ain't seen the last of Jamarcus Johnson. First down excuse me, second down and goal to go for Forest City. The ball on the eight-yard line of the Raiders. The second time in this game that Forest City has had the ball near the Raider goal line, and the Raider defense has been up to the task the previous time. Let's we'll see if they can hold them again. They give to the running back. The running back running left side. No room to run over there. Is He is brought down by Kylan Shelton. Tyler Craig also in on the stop. No gain. It's going to be third down and goal to go from the eight. Good job by the Raider defense. And that was a really good job there by the Raider defense. I think I saw all gray shirts get at the football there. Good job by Raider defense. A host of Raiders, as a PA guy would like to say, whenever he did not say who made the tackle. Third down and goal to go for the Mustangs. Quarterback. Rolls to his right, option pitch to number 28. He fights through a would-be tackler, and he is stopped short of the goal line by, by Jordan Pegram, and there is some extracurricular activity going out there on the field right now. It looked like Miles Williams took a shot at a Mustang late, and that's going to be a, a definite unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders, and, boy, you hate to see that. Maybe Miles was shoved into him. Let's hope that's the case, but it's it's going to be uh, – it would have been fourth down and goal to go, but it is – if it is unsportsmanlike against the Raiders, it's going to be a first down. They're getting both teams to their respective sidelines, and the referees are talking things over. The officials, I should say, talking things over. One of them – only one of them is considered the referee, the man in the white hat, the – Head of the crew, the boss man among the men in the striped shirts. They are having a committee meeting out there and dead ball personal foul against the Raiders. Personal foul against Nelson. And so that will, should be an automatic first down half the distance to the goal, which means it's going to be first down and goal to go from about the one foot line perhaps. Mm. So the Raider defense on the verge of a big stop and then a Lamont Sanford type play. You big dummy. 6.44 remaining and we're letting these Mustangs hang around here. And every time they score, there's less and less chance of the turbo clock being activated and the TMC being in bed at a good hour. First down and goal to go. And as I said, it's ball is maybe on about the one foot line Mustangs in the pistol formation give the ball to the running back he is met by a wall of gray jerseys led by Blake Brown they're gonna have to blow the whistle things are a little bit chippy out there Keon Stallings Jordan Pegram Caden Newsom 
also in on the stop. And I guess that was fourth down and goal to go. It should have been first down if it was personal foul, I would think. But that's a turnover on downs. And a flag is thrown. And that's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct, I'm afraid, against the Raiders. So I guess there was a lot of celebration going on, and I guess they did. the referees did not like some of the celebrating. They're writing down numbers, and let's hope that nobody is ejected after this. If they're ejected, they're not going to be eligible for next week's game against Valley View. And that would be very bad. It sure would, especially on that defensive side of the ball. We have some stellar athletes. You got to forgive me, sports fans, Raider fans. I, I sure thought it was first down after the personal foul. I thought it was an automatic first down, but it's not. Evidently, it was fourth down and go to go instead of first down and go to go. The Raider defense made the big stop, but then afterwards, it's unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders. Thankfully, I did not see any ejections, and so. That's good news, and let me see. Now he's coming over to explain the situation to Coach Hampton and Coach Wilson. And let's hope that nobody is ejected. Because if they are ejected, the TMC will be dejected. And nobody wants that. So Coach Hampton nodding his head and explaining the situation to Coach Allen Johnson on the near sideline. So a lot of celebrating going on, and the referees threw the flag during the celebration. Evidently, there were some unsportsmanlike things being said. It's going to be first down and goal to go. Excuse me, first down for the Raiders. They're going to be starting at their own two-yard line. Definitely not goal to go, about 98 yards to go. They give it to Keandre Pope. Pope across the five-yard line, across the 10, 15. He's to the 20, about an 18-yard gain for the Pope. And the Pope... Over 100 yards on the night, 115 yards at least by my stats over here. Good night for the Pope and some much needed breathing room. Move the chains, first down Raiders, first and 10 from the 20. And that was a good run by Keandre Pope. Brought it to the 20 yard line. Great job, Keandre. Curtis Smith in the backfield, he gives to Kylan Shelton. Kylan Shelton busted across the left side. He's still on his feet across the 40, the 50. I don't think they're going to get him. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10, and they do get him inside the 10-yard line. Holy cow, what a run by Kylan Shelton. A gain from the 20 to the 10. That's about a 70-yard gain, I believe, if my math is correct. Big-time run by Kylan Shelton, and the Raiders are in business. And However, they're bringing it back. There's a flag on the play. Holding against the Raiders. My goodness, what a great run by Kylan Shelton that that holding penalty negates. Let me tell you something. Number 22 is an outstanding running back. I saw it in the scrimmage against Osceola. Uh, he... Runs the ball hard, the fastest player on the team, hits the hole, makes cuts, tough to bring down. He's so valuable on the defensive side of the of the field that doesn't get a whole lot of touches as running back, but whenever he does, good things happen. Got an injured player down that's a Mustang on the near the end zone. He's up and he's walking off, and that's good news. Bad news is a 70-yard run by Colin Shelton is negated by a holding penalty. That's a 10-yard from the spot of the foul, of the infraction, unless it happens behind the line of scrimmage. In that case, it's a 10-yard penalty. And it is a 10-yard penalty, so it's going to be first and 20 for Nettleton from their own 11 after a an electric run by Colin Shelton, negated by a penalty. Keandre Pope back out at running back in the backfield with the Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton. First and 20 for the Raiders. They're up 27 to six. They give it to the Pope. The Pope bounces out left side, following the lead blocker, Kobe Miller. And he's got a big gain out across the 25 yard line to the Pope. Let's see if I can't find that line judge over there. Uh, a 24-yard line. Going to be a gain of about 14 for the Pope. It's going to be second down to six. 
Good run by Keandre Pope and great blocking by Colby Miller. Colby from the right guard position, he pulled on that one and opened up the hole for the Pope to go through. Pope with over 100 yards on the game again. Following the lead blocker of Kobe Miller, but he's tackled in the backfield. Good job there by number 10, Joshua Patillo. And that's going to be a loss of about a yard. It's going to be third down and seven. That's a good read by Joshua Patillo. He saw that play before it even happened. Good job by Joshua Patillo. Hampton, the Mad Dog, from the gun. Hard count. Mustangs. They hold their position. The Mad Dog looks to the sidelines. He's going to pass it. Looking downfield, throwing downfield. Intended for Q Thompson, overthrown, incomplete. It'll be four down to seven for the Raiders, and as they are deep in their own territory, they will punt. 4-13 remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton with a 21-point lead is 27-6. to six. And that was just a ball with too much arm strength there. And he just overthrew a fast receiver. Q Thompson has really good track speed. Curtis Smith on to punt. Back deep is DJ Sinclair. Nettleton with a little bit of some personnel issues there. They had 10 players on the field. Now they've got 11. Curtis. Standing about the nine-yard line, boots it. Good punt by Curtez. It hits at about the 47-yard line and is fielded there by the Mustang punt returner. That is DJ Sinclair. Risky move, but it paid off because if he would have let that thing keep on bouncing, it might have went 10, 12 more yards as it is. He stopped it at the 48-yard line, and that's where Forest City will take over first and 10. And this is good field position for Forest City, but this Raider defense, I think they're going to hold them here. I like the way you think. The power of positive thinking. Norman Vincent Peel will be very proud of you. And the TMC is too. Let's think positive. I'm thinking another turnover right here. Maybe a scoop and a score. Maybe a pick six. It's first and 10 for Forest City. They give to the running back, bounces out right side, has some positive running, has some positive yards. He's across the 20 yard line, the 10, that's gonna be a touchdown. Into the end zone is number 29. That is Willie Murphy and Forest City, the first team to score here in the second half. And we got a Raider down. And that was a good run. He bounced in and out the hole. And the Raider down looks like Kylan Shelton. And we got two Raider down. We have one on the 22 and one on the 50. And these are not Raiders you want to see down. So the Raider medical staff kind of doing a little bit of a triage right here, checking both down Raiders. And I don't, I don't have a number on either one of them. One DJ. of them is Kylan Shelton. I believe the other is Blake Brown. Yeah, we definitely don't want either one of those guys to be injured for sure. Both are defensive studs. Shelton comes up, and he's walking off on his own power. That's good news. So Kylan Shelton gingerly. is all right. He's at the 20-yard uh, line. Blake Brown is at the 50-yard line, and that's where. That was, that's Jamie Morris, excuse me. Jamie Morris, okay, not Blake Brown, Jamie Morris. That's right, it is the Carpenter, another uh, Raider that we could ill afford to lose for sure. It's a talented Nettleton team. But every one of the coaches would tell you they're talented, but they're not very deep. Um, we cannot afford injuries. We kind of found that out last week at Southside, a game that I, I really believe we were a couple of three touchdowns better than Southside. But because of the uh, illness and uh, our lack of depth, um, we were one point better than them. Jamie Morris is up, and that's good news. He's walking off the field, and as is Kylan Shelton. The bad news is Forest City scored on about a 60-yard touchdown run. Did you catch the uh, yardage on that by any chance? I think it was about from the 47. 47. So that's 60-ish yards is what I'll put down, and we'll, we'll review the film later. 
but it makes the score 27 to 12. 3.51 remaining in the third quarter. The Raiders with a 15 point lead. Nettleton elects to take a timeout and we'll take a timeout with them. A 30 second break, 3.51 remaining in the third quarter. It's 27 to 12 Raiders. Back in 30 seconds, some more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Elite Eye Care has a new Jonesboro location that is now open at 2100 East Highland near the old Indian Mall. Hey, it's Brandon Baxter and the team at Elite Eye Care is who my family trusts for their personal eye care. Elite Eye Care specializes in eye care solutions for patients of all ages, and you can be assured that your family is cared for like their own. Schedule your appointment at EliteEyeCareAndOptical.com or call 972-6040. Elite Eye Care at 2100 East Highland in Jonesboro and at 1515 West Kings Highway in Paragu. Elite Eye Care. Your vision is our focus. We welcome you back to Raider Field, where we're 351 remaining in the third quarter. The Nettleton Raiders lead the Forest City Mustangs by the score of 27 to 12. Forest City just scored on a Willie Murphy, about a 60-yard touchdown run. He broke a couple of tackles and beat the Raider defense to the end zone. 27 to 12 the score, and Forest City is going to be going for two. Nettleton elected to take a timeout to get their plan together to stop this two-point conversion. Play is whistled dead before it even got, got going good. Washington the quarterback in, and it's going to be offsides against the Raiders. That's not going to help our cause. It's going to take the ball half the distance to the goal. So instead of starting from the three, it's at the one and a half right now. Mm. Two-point conversion attempt on the way. They give to the running back, and he is stopped short. Well, they're actually saying it's good. They're saying it's good. That is not, So the two-point conversion is good. Trying to get that young man's number, 28. Two-point conversion is good by Montrell Matthews. And that makes the score 27 to 14. 351 remaining in the third quarter. We will keep it right here uh, during the uh, interim time here while they're getting ready for the kickoff. So two Two-point conversion, good, makes the score 27 to 14, and I will give the Mustangs credit. They are coming in here and playing the Raiders a whole lot closer than anybody thought that they would tonight, Jacob. They sure are, and they're playing really good. We knew they were gonna have some athletes. Sure. And they came out battling hard from the get-go. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Forest City is, they lost to Valley View 49 to nothing. Southside 36 to nothing. Batesville 37 to six. I really thought that, uh, and then most folks did as well, that it would be a similar situation here tonight. Turbo clock, just a route. That's not the situation right now. Nettleton with a 13 to point, 13 point lead here in the 350, with 351 remaining in the third quarter. And the Raiders with a ball game on their hands. Forest City on to kick off and let's see if they try to go onside. They got the momentum. See if they can't see if they try some kind of onside kick right here. They kick it deep. Scoots past the 10 into the end zone. Boy, Keandre Pope and the Raiders caught a break right there. As he tried to feel that line drive. It got past him and Thankfully rolled into the end zone, and so it'll be a touchback. It'll be first and 10 Raiders from their own 20. And that was a heck of a kick. Great line drive on that one. And he got a heck of a Mustang roll. Of course, I know if he had it to do over again, he would love for it to stop at about the two yard line. That would have been a good situation for the Mustangs. Thankfully, Raider Nation, it rolled into the end zone. Nettleton takes over first and 10 at their own 20. Maddox Hampton back to work. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. Let's see if the Raider offense makes a statement here. They pass to Curtis Smith. Gets a block from Q Thompson, bounces outside. 
He's across the 30, and that's where he falls down with first down yardage. It's going to be first and 10 Raiders from the 30 after a 10-yard completion from the Mad Dog to Curtis Smith. And that's a good job by Curtis Smith, getting the 10 yards after the catch and juking and jiving. Good job, Curtis. Maddox Hampton from the gun. He's got three receivers out wide right. He's got the Pope in the backfield with him. Tedder. Curtez and Q Thompson spread out wide right. He gives to the Pope. The Pope following the lead block of Kobe Miller. Cuts back in. Fumble on the play. Recovered by the Mustangs. So the Pope coughed it up and fumble is recovered by DJ Sinclair. First and ten Mustangs on the Raider 38 yard line and that's where they're going to take over this possession and we have a injured Raider on the field. Is that the Pope this it, down? It is. Okay. Which Keandre was obviously hit hard, hard enough that it separated the, foot, separated the football from his person. 3.02 on the clock here in the third quarter. And Nettleton with the lead, 27 to 14. Forest City, however, I would dare say Uncle Mo is wearing blue and white right now. They have got the momentum, and let's hope that Keandre is all right as he was hit hard, and he is still on the turf. They're checking on him, and he is laying face down on the turf. Nick, our trainer, is down there checking on him. Blake Tennyson, our running back coach. Coach Clint Wilson, our offensive coordinator. And Stephen Hampton, our head coach, all three checking on their senior running back, Keandre Pope. Keandre probably has 130 yards rushing tonight. Has had a really good game. And they're calling for the ambulance. So that is very bad news for Raider Nation as Keandre Pope, and I believe that is Keandre. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do, you, do we see Keandre? I haven't seen the number yet. I, I do think that's Keandre. He's not on the sideline right now. Mm. i tell you what let's do. Let's take a 60-second break. We'll take a 60-second injury timeout and we will um, keep you up, we'll, we'll bring you up to date with, um, with what's going on whenever we come back. So 60 second break, and when we come back, we'll have more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Back in 60 seconds. A few years ago, a friend of mine was going to town to have lunch with the president of a college that he supported. He was stopped for speeding and the trooper asked for his driver's license and Jim said, I don't have my driver's license, they're in my billfold at home. The trooper asked why his billfold was at home. He said, I'm having lunch with the college president and the last thing you want to take with you is your billfold. Best price, best service. Glenn Sane and God bless our kids. Farmers and Merchants Bank announces the lobby of our new branch in Jonesboro is now open. The drive through is an MVP center with live video tellers 7 to 7 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. So in addition to our beautiful bank on Highland, you can also visit our new branch at the corner of Southwest Drive and Parker. More MVPs, more ATMs, more me banking at Farmers and Merchants Bank, member FDIC. And we welcome you back to Raider Field where we are in an injury timeout. 3.02 remaining in the third game, in the third quarter of this game. Nettleton with a 27 to 14 lead. And Keandre Pope is the injured Nettleton Raider. He's having a heck of a game tonight. He rushed for uh, definitely over 120 yards. Uh, however, on the last play, he was hit hard, fumbled the ball. Forest City picked it up. The good news is he is sitting up. And looks like he is talking to the coaches. That's wonderful news. They, they were summoning the ambulance, but then they told the ambulance, nope, stay right where you are. Keandre is up. He's walking with the assistance of Coach Clint Wilson and Nick, our trainer. And he's uh, 
looking up toward the stands. Good to see number one. Good to see the Pope walking off the field. And that's the second time that the field, the game has been stopped for a significant amount of time for injury. The, in the first half, Q Thompson was, was laid out, and they stopped the game for several minutes for that. Q was able to get back into the game. Keandre Pope over on the sidelines. And let's hope the same thing happens with Keandre as he is obviously still shaken up. He's standing on his own power and they're attending to him. And let's hope that Keandre is, uh, is okay, maybe even back out on the field tonight. That would be wonderful. First and 10 for the Mustangs. They have the ball on the Raider 39 yard line. They give to the running back. Number three is met by Cohen Liggins. Also, Keon Stallings in on the stop. Gain of a couple. It's going to be second down and eight. Nathaniel Gonzalez out there on the field as well in the mix. And second down and eight for the Mustangs. And that's a good stop there by our Raider defense. They sniffed that play out quickly. Good job by this Raider defense. Washington, the quarterback for Forest City. Fumbled snap, picks it back up. And he is thrown backwards by Caden Newsom and Nathaniel Gonzalez. Going to be a loss of about three on the play, a loss of two. It'll bring up third down and ten. Caden Newsom and Nathaniel Gonzalez came after him like a spider monkey, if you ask me. <laughs> like a spider monkey. They probably all jacked up on Mount to do down there. Yeah, they may be. They may be, Chip. Third and 10 for the Mustangs. Ball on the Raider 39 yard line. You got to figure they're in four down territory right here. Washington, the quarterback, in the gun. Pistol formation. He's going to pass. Under pressure, he decides to run it. Has the first down. He is brought down by Nettleton's Nathaniel Gonzalez. Good open field tackle from behind by Nathaniel, but the Mustangs move the chains. It's gonna be first down and 10 for Forest City. The ball on the Raider 25 yard line. And that was a good run there by number nine, Daquan Scott. He ran so hard, he ran out of a shoe. Good job by Daquan Scott. So first and 10 Mustangs from the 26 yard line. And now would be a good time for one of them their turnovers. They give to the running back, running right up the middle. He is tackled by Blake Brown. Nathaniel Gonzalez also in on the stop for the Raiders. It's going to be a gain of five, second down and five. And that's a good stop there by Blake Brown and Nathaniel Gonzalez. I'm glad to see Nathaniel Gonzalez on defense right now. He's made quite the force on special teams this year. I say he's played his way into some playing time on the defensive side of the field. Less than a minute to play here in the third quarter. Nettleton up 27 to 13. Ball is complete inside the 10 yard line to Roshide Washington. It's gonna be first down and goal to go. The clock stops with 36 seconds for them to move the chains. It's gonna be first down Mustangs inside the 10 yard line. And Rashad Washington has been a good player all night. He has a couple good receptions. He's played good defense. Shout out to Rashad Washington. First down and goal to go for the Mustangs. Ball on the Raider nine yard line and look like Washington had fell down on the far sideline. I guess he's cramping up over there. The medical staff coaches coming out to take a look at him. And 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Nettleton with a 27 to 14 lead. I may have said 27 to 13 just a minute ago, but it's 27 to 14. Nettleton with a, a 13 point lead and the uh, officials time out for an injured player and gives Nettleton a chance to hydrate their players. Mustangs also uh, getting some water. They say you can lead a horse to water. You can lead a Mustang to water, but you can't make him drink. That's what they say. But Looks like the Mustangs having no problem over there guzzling their water, as are the Raiders. 
And it's going to be first down and goal to go for the Mustangs when play resumes at the Raider nine-yard line, a game that is a whole lot closer than anybody thought it was going to be tonight. Nettleton with a two-score lead right now, 27-14 to 14 here in the waning seconds of the third quarter. First down and goal to go for the Mustangs on the nine-yard line. They got nine yards. They got four downs to get it. See if the Raider defense can come up big again. This time, Jamarcus Johnson with a tackle for the loss. Good job by Jamarcus as he snuffed that run out, throws him back a yard or two. It's going to be second down and goal to go. Ball marked at the 10-yard line. And that is the end of the first quarter. Your score, Nettleton 27, Forest City 14, back in 60 seconds with the fourth quarter. You've tuned in to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Kids grow up so fast, and so has the Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic. This is our clinic's 10th year of creating healthier tomorrows for the kids in Northeast Arkansas. There's no need to cross the river or hit the highway for your cardiology or diabetes needs. Road trips are for fun, not for health care. The team at Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic is celebrating by doing what we always do, giving your kids more time to be kids. Learn more at archildrens.org slash Jonesboro. Nettleson High School Athletics is brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center and Toyo Tires. Where there's always one thing you can count on, we go the distance for you. Before you hit the road for a trip across country or across town, drop by Gateway Tire and Service Center and check out the great deals on Toyo Tires. Whether it's tires or auto repair, you can always count on one thing. At Gateway Tire and Toyo Tires, we go the distance for you. At Gateway Tire and Paragold and Jonesboro, we go the distance for you. Fourth quarter about to get underway here at Nettleton. The Raiders lead the Mustangs 27 to 14. The Mustangs, however, playing very tough tonight and playing with the momentum right now. It's second down and goal to go for the Mustangs. The ball is on the Raider 10 yard line. This Raider defense all season long, Jacob, they have come up big when we needed them. Let's see if they can't get another stop right here. Second down and goal to go for Forest City. Washington, the quarterback. He gives to his running back, running right up the middle. Keon Stallings oh, yeah, leading the tackle. A gain of five. It's going to be third down and goal to go. A gain of four. Third down and goal to go from the six. And that's a good stop by the Raider defense. Let's hope they can have two more good stops to make it. Uh, turnover on downs. Six yards to go, two downs in which to make it. Third down and goal to go from the six. Washington, the quarterback, jet sweep running right side. And he has stopped short of the end zone. Washington, the ball carrier, he stopped at about the four yard line, it looks like. Correction, at the three. It's gonna be fourth down and goal to go from the three. Clock is rolling at 11, well, actually a stop for some reason at 11.09. There must be some sort of official timeout. This has been a very long game, 9.25 on my watch. A lot of penalties, a lot of officials timeouts, and a lot of timeouts called, and that's another timeout called by Forest City. We'll take it with them, a 30-second break. With 11.09 remaining in the game, in the game, Nettleton leading 27-14. to Fourth and goal when we come back, Raider football on the EAB Sports Network. Hello, I'm estate planning and elder law attorney, Chad Oldham. More and more often today, I hear clients tell me that the only thing golden about the golden years is that it takes all the gold to grow old. Don't be a victim of rising health care and nursing home costs. Be prepared. Have a plan. Contact us today to find out how we help our clients protect and preserve assets for family and future generations. The Oldham Law Firm, 603 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro, or visit us on the web at oldhamlawfirm.com. And 
and we welcome you back to Raider Field where we are in the fourth quarter. 11.09 remaining in this game. Nettleton with a 27-14 lead over a very scrappy Forest City Mustang team who's given their best effort of the year here tonight for sure. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go from the, for the Mustangs. The ball on their Raider four-yard line. Raider defense needing a big stop. Cheerleaders trying to get the crowd riled up behind the Raider D. Washington, the quarterback. They got a pistol formation. He's going to pass. Back of the end zone, it is overthrown, intended for Washington, incomplete. That's going to be a turnover on downs, and Nettleton will take over first and 10. They'll start on their own four-yard line. And that was a good stop by that Raider defense and a great pass rush there by Jordan Pegram. That's an all-state pass rush. Good job, Jordan Pegram. Yeah, he caused that hurried throw and that bad pass. And that's one of those things that might not show up on the stat sheet, but... You can bet number 90 making his mark on this game in a whole lot of different ways. So Nettleton will take over first and 10 on their own four. Keandre Pope out of the game, and we see him. He's sitting down on the bench right in front of us. Let's hope that Keandre is all right. Gives to Kylan Shelton. Kylan battling his way for a tough, maybe a yard gain before he is thrown backwards. Actually a couple of yards by Kylan Shelton, the new running back for the Raiders. Second down and, and we'll call it second down and eight. And that was a good run by Kylan Shelton. He only got a yard, but that was a really physical yard. Good job, Kylan. Curtis Smith and Kylan Shelton in the backfield for the Raiders. A couple of very good runners. It gives it to Kylan. Kylan, actually, it's a keeper of Curtis. He fooled me. Curtis still on his feet. He's got a first down at across the 15-yard line. What a good ball fake. He, he fooled everybody, including the PA, the play-by-play -play guy. First down, Raiders. That's a good run by Curtis Smith. He faked the handoff and had that wide open left sideline and took it. Good job, Curtis Smith. 10-14 on the clock. Got out of bounds, but I don't think that should stop the clock with 10-14 remaining. It did stop the clock, however, and Maddox Sampton back to work. Gives to Kylan Shelton. Kylan right up the middle, still on his feet across the 30-yard line. That's a gain of about 13. Great job by Kylan Shelton. Move the chains, first down Raiders. And usually they say take out their legs and a Forest City defender tried that, but Kylan just mowed right over him. Good job, Kylan Shelton. Kylan's older brother, Montel Moore, outstanding player, I believe the class of 2015. And I know he's proud of his little brother. Great run by Kylan Shelton. Gives it to Kylan again. Kylan looking for the hole. Moving forward for another nice gain by Kylan. Looks like this time it's a gain of about seven. It's going to be second down and three. You know, we say it all the time, feed the studs. And right now, Kylan Shelton is playing like a stud. Good job, Kylan Shelton. Love to see the way he – I love to see him run the ball. Second down and three. Maddox Sampton from the gun. Kylan Shelton in the backfield with him. Spread out wide left is Q Thompson. So glad that Q is back in the game after an injury in the first half. Curtis Smith spread out wide to the right. Clock is at 9.07 and ticking. Nettleton with a 13-point lead. They give to Kylan Shelton. Kylan running up the middle, twists his way forward to a, uh, a gain of about three. Enough for a first down. First down, Raiders. First down, Kylan Shelton. And another hard physical running. He always finds the hole. Kylan Shelton is a great running back, and he has a bright future here at Nettleton. No doubt about that. He's a junior. And... Keandre Pope, a senior, he will obviously graduate next year. So, Kylan with a maybe a little chance to show what he can do here tonight. Right up the middle, a 10-yard gain at least, about a 15-yard gain for Kylan Shelton. A good slashing, spinning run. 
He's to the 45 yard line, 46 yard line of Forest City, first down Raiders. That's another great run by Kylan Shelton. We're seeing his praises up here. That's because he's doing really good. He found the hole and just punches it through. Good job, Kylan. He runs the ball with authority. Downhill, finds daylight, scoots through it. Mad Dog with Kylan Shelton on his left hip. Curtis Smith spread out wide to the right. To the left is Q Thompson. He gives to Kylan Shelton. Kylan Shelton yanked from behind. Here comes the flag. He's got a gain of about seven. I'm afraid that's going to be either a uh, horse collar or a face mask. Let's see what they, they call. It's going to be against Forest City, certainly. I believe that'll be a horse collar. Actually, a face mask. Face mask against Forest City. Now, there's... That's going to be a 15-yard penalty. I say, actually, it looks like a five-yard penalty. So they must have called that the inadvertent face mask. After the penalty, it's going to be first down and three. So I'm supposing that's a five-yard spot penalty. I learned something new every day about this game. First down and three for the Raiders. 7.41 on the clock. Nettleton up 27-14. to 14. Kylan Shelton in the backfield with the Mad Dog. The Mad Dog is going to pass. Looking deep, throwing deep. Curtis Smith, and he is it's incomplete. No flag. And he was being face guarded there by Jamonte Flanoy. If we were playing NFL rules, that would be offensive pass interference, but I don't think that is a, a penalty in high school ball on first and three i like the idea take a deep shot second down and three let's see if they start feeding number 22 again they do give to kylan shelton kylan shelton has the first down lunges forward to the 33 yard line first and 10 raiders clock stopped for moving of the chains at 719 nettleton with a 13 point lead 719 to go i say roll clock roll I agree, and I say keep feeding Colin Shelton. He's working right now. Colin Shelton is an excellent defensive player, or nickelback, but he is also a phenomenal running back. He is still out there. I say feed number 22. They do. They give the ball to Colin Shelton. Bounces off left tackle, moving the pile forward. I tell you, he is a. You see Colin. You see Colin walking the halls. He's obviously a well-built, muscular young man, and he used those powerful muscles to propel himself about seven yards that time. We'll call it second down and three. And Colin has been muscular since about the seventh grade. He's always been a big guy. Shout out to Colin Shelton for staying in the weight room. Four, six, second and four. So second down and four actually for the Raiders. The Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton, gives to Colin Shelton. Colin Shelton running right side. He's tripped Shelton up in the, the backfield by number 10. By number 10 and that's no four, gain. Four, so it's going to be third down and four for the Raiders. And it looks like they're bringing out that Heavy package, Jordan Pegram, Keon Stallings. Also out there is Jerry Hudgens. And loading up the left side of the line of scrimmage over there by Kylan Gates and Ian Landrum. Third down and four. Curtis Smith, he's going to run it himself. Looking for a hole. Falls forward. Let's see the spot. He's real close to the first down. I believe he's got it. He is right at the first down marker. First down Raiders. 531 on the clock as Curtis Smith needed four yards. Curtis Smith got four yards. And usually when the Raiders are in need of a first down, ball in Curtis's hands, the first down is usually yep. a couple seconds later. I'm no offensive coordinator, but if I was, I think I would give it to Curtis. That would be one of my main plays. Maddox Sampton. Gives to Colin Shelton. Colin Shelton running right up the middle.
across the 20. It's going to be a gain of three. Second down and seven. Clock at 5.05 and ticking. Nettleton 27, Forest City 14. Hampton and Shelton in the backfield. Q Thompson and Curtis Smith spread out wide right. Mad Dog passes. It is incomplete. Intended for Q Thompson, a little bit high off of his hands. It's going to be third down and seven. And that was uh, almost a lateral. It was uh, almost a backwards pass right there. Thankfully, it was ruled a forward pass, an incomplete pass. That would have been a live ball, and that could have gotten real ugly real quick. Third down and seven for the Raiders. The ball on the 20 yard line. You would figure this is four down territories. So we got two plays to get seven yards. The clock is at stop. The incomplete pass stops the clock at 430. Nettleton with a two score lead, 27 to 14 over this upstart Forest City Mustangs team. They got their first win of the season last week. They got a taste of victory. Man, they have played hard here tonight against the heavily favored Raiders. Timeout Raiders, we will take a 30 second break with them. 430 remaining in this game. Nettleton up 13. Nettleton 27, Forest City 14. Back in 30 with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Plaza Tire Service credit card or one of our no credit needed financing solutions. Now's the time to outfit your truck or SUV with a great set of go anywhere, do anything Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP off-road tires and save a hundred bucks instantly exclusively at Plaza Tire Service. <laughs> And we welcome you back to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. We understand we have lost our radio audience. We apologize for that. We're trying to reconnect. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, then obviously you know that um, we are still live here at Nettleton. 4.30 remaining in the game. Nettleton with a 27 to 14 lead. And now then our radio crew is back. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Third down and seven for the Raiders. The Mad Dog going to pass. The pass is complete to Curtis. First down inside the five yard line. He is thrown out of bounds. And it's going to be first down and goal to go for the Raiders. Ball marked at the six yard line. Big time throw by Maddox Hampton and a great catch by Curtis Smith. That is an excellent catch. He got a couple yards after the catch there and on an out route. Good job by Curtis Smith. First so first down and goal to go for the Raiders. Nettleton up 27 to 14 here late in the fourth quarter. They give the ball to Kylan Shelton. He's tackled in the backfield by Joshua Patillo. Yeah, Forest City, we knew coming in they were going to have some athletes. Patillo, Washington, Rashad Washington, and Dalen Washington. They got some players. They sure do. They're all really good athletes here at Forest City. Clock rolling. It's less than four minutes now. Three minutes and 55 seconds. Second down and goal to go. Ball marked at the nine-yard line. Kylan Shelton, the running back, the Mad Dog, Maddox Sampton, the quarterback. He's going to pass. It is complete to Curtis Smith. He is shoved out of bounds at the three-yard line. It's going to be third down and goal to go from the three. And it looks like we're sending out our big heavy package here. I believe we might run the ball here with Curtis Smith. There's a good chance, and i tell you the truth. One of these days, I would like for them to call my number, call my name, TMC, come down here and try to run behind Jordan Pegram. I think I could do that. Heavy package on the left side of the offensive line. Curtis Smith, the quarterback, he's going to run it himself. Off the block of Kobe Miller, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Curtis Smith. Touchdown, Raiders. 
Curtis Smith there out of the heavy package, pulling guard Colby Miller laid down a really good block, and Curtis Smith punches it in from three yards out. Touchdown, Curtis Smith. Touchdown, Raiders. And we're on for the extra point, Joseph Newhung. 33 to 14, the score. Newhung on to kick the PAT. Swinging gate formation for the Raiders. And pink mist filling the air here as somebody busted something pink down there. The kick is up and the kick is good. With 3.08 remaining in the game, the score is now 34, Forest City 14. We'll take a 30 second break and we'll have the, uh, for, some more fourth quarter action for you when we come back. Nettleton up 34 to 14 with 3.08 to play. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. When you bank at First Security, you're choosing better for yourself and fellow Arkansans. Better service from friendly professionals who really invest in your goals. Better solutions with convenient tools and smart resources. And better support for the things that matter to you, as well as the communities that matter to us all. Because finding your better at First Security makes Arkansas better too. First Security. Bank better. Member FDIC. Curtis Smith with his third touchdown of the game gives Nettleton a 34 to 14 lead here in the fourth quarter. 308 to play, and Nettleton on their way to moving to seven and one on the season. Unless the Forest City can mount a comeback of historic, miraculous proportion. And Joseph Newhong is on to kick off. Antonio Almarez usually does the kicking, but it looks like Joseph Newhong is on to kick. He kicks a squibbler. It's fielded by number 29 at the 29. And he is wrapped up by Nettleton special team superstar Nathaniel Gonzalez right there. He falls forward to the 31. Another special team stop by Nathaniel Gonzalez. I like the way that young man plays special teams. I, I do too. It looks like he had him by the foot there, and you can see him kind of hopping on the 30, trying to maybe shake the tackler, but he held on to that foot. Good job, Nathaniel Gonzalez. Yeah, Nathaniel was not about to let him go anywhere. Willie Murphy on the return. Two yards technically on the return. Three minutes to play in the game. Forest City sends their offensive unit out. Give these Mustangs credit. They have played hard tonight, and they have played perhaps their best game of the season against the Raiders. Play is whistled dead. Back out playing quarterback is Daquan Scott. And it's going to be offsides against the Raiders. So first and 10 turns five, into a first and five. It'll be first and five for the Mustang. 2.57 remaining in the game. Fumbled snap, gets past the quarterback. He, incomplete pass. He fired it out to his receiver on the far sideline and uh, could have been a big loss on the count of the, the, the snap was basically a ground ball, went through the legs of the quarterback. But the end result of the play is an incomplete pass. It's gonna be second down and five for the Mustangs on the their own 36 yard line. And after the fumble there, there was a really good pass rush still. Clark Phillips busted through the line and gave the quarterback havoc on that throw. So second down and five for the Mustangs. Two minutes and 43 seconds to play. Nettleton up 34 to 14. Quarterback drops straight back now under pressure he's hit by Clark Phillips right as he was throwing are you serious Clark Clark 
hammers the quarterback as he was throwing, and that definitely impacted the trajectory of the thrown ball. It's going to be third down and five after the big hit by Clark Phillips. Clark Phillips is looking phenomenal. Two great pass rushes in a row, and this sophomore-dominated defensive line right now looks good. No doubt about it. Jordan Pegram says, save the neck for me, Clark. Third down and five for the Mustangs. 2.40 to play, Nettleton with a 20-point lead, 34 to 14. Scott, the quarterback, in the gun, pistol formation. He is rolling to his right, under pressure, he throws it. It is nearly intercepted, almost picked off by Cohen Liggins. That would have been his second interception on the year. Incomplete pass, it's gonna be fourth down and five, and with 2.34 remaining in the game, you gotta figure Forest City will go for it here. You really do, and yet again, this pass rush has been great, and no other but Clark Phillips got back there again, put hands in the face of the quarterback. I love it. Clark Phillips, sophomore. He's had a good season here in his sophomore campaign. Also a good NTV student. Played the drummer for Def Leppard in the 80s music video. Pour some sugar on me. Fourth down and five. Forest City going for it. And they're going to pass. Clark Phillips under pressure. The quarterback runs it. He's angling toward the first down. He has it. Runs out of bounds. About the 46-yard line. So that keeps the drive alive. And it is first down and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 47-yard line, 2.24 to play. Nettleton with a 20-point lead. And that's a good run there by Dequan Scott. Clark Phillips came in and collapsed the pocket, but Dequan Scott just escaped. Way to be an athlete there, Dequan Scott. Yep, good run by Dequan. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. They're losing by 20 with 2.24 to play, but they're still playing hard and you got to give them credit for that there's a timeout on the field we will take it with them with 30 with a 30 second break 224 remaining raiders up by 20 34 to 14 back in 30 is more raider football on ntv and the eab sports network don't let your credit stop you from getting your next vehicle drive your deal to the max at a dealer financing you automax of jonesboro hi folks craig stone here if you need to upgrade your ride don't worry about your pass come to automax at automax we have financing to fit your budget with affordable monthly payments and low down payments give us a call at 870-934-9200 or speed up your approval by applying online at automaxjonesboro.com and hey we buy cars too even if you don't buy ours so if you're looking to buy new give us a chance to buy yours and ensure you get the most out of your trading Automax, financing you. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. It's 2.24 remaining in the game. Nettleton with a 34 to 14 lead over Forest City. Really played hard tonight. Quarterback pass is complete behind the line of scrimmage at number nine. And he, I believe, is tackled by Cohen Liggins before he can get out of bounds. Great job over there by Cohen Liggins. That'll keep the clock rolling. He was trying to get to the sideline. Cohen Ligon says, I do not think so, and I believe we've got another injury. This time it is a Mustang who's injured on the far sideline. So let's hope that that young man is all right. The Nettleton medical staff is headed that way to take care of him. Nettleton has sustained a costly injury tonight. They're starting running back the senior, Keandre Pope, who is having a career night. By my stats, over 120 yards rushing. But he would, in the third quarter, he was knocked out of the game, knocked unconscious, it appears, and he has not gone back into the game. He's still, uh, thankfully, he's still here. He's not had to go to the hospital or anything. He's sitting on the bench, has a towel over his head, probably is, uh, I'm sure he has a severe headache, but let's hope that Keandre is, is doing all right. Um, Q Thompson was injured in the first half. They had to stop play for Q as he was hit very hard and uh, he walked slowly to the sidelines, but Q is thankfully back out. And so um, the injury bug is has hit us tonight and we will 
do our best to get you a report on Keandre after the game. I'll tell you what, we'll take a 30-second break here for injury timeout. We'll take a 30-second break. 2-11 remaining in the game. Nettleton up 34-14. to We'll be back in 30 with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. When you bank at First Security, you're choosing better for yourself and fellow Arkansans. Better service from friendly professionals who really invest in your goals. Better solutions with convenient tools and smart resources. And better support for the things that matter to you, as well as the communities that matter to us all. Because finding your better at First Security makes Arkansas better too. First Security. Bank better. Member FDIC. And we welcome you back to Raider Field. We're in the fourth quarter with 2.11 remaining. The Nettleton Raiders lead Forest City 34 to 14. We're just coming out of an injury timeout. A young man from Forest City is being walked off the field. Nettleton's medical staff over there checking on him. That is Daquan Scott, the quarterback for Forest City, walking under his own power, and he seems to be walking just fine. So let's hope pray that everything is all right with Daquan. We sure wish that young man nothing but the best. These Mustangs have come in here tonight at Nettleton, and they have given it a valiant effort and, and have played a good game. They've kept it a lot closer than anybody thought they would tonight. As uh, The score is 34 to 14 here in the fourth quarter. Washington, the quarterback, second down and six for the Mustangs. They give to the running back up the middle. He runs, but he is brought down by Nathaniel Gonzalez, a good open field tackle there by Nathaniel. Gain of three, it's gonna be second down, excuse me, third down and two for the Mustangs. Like to see the way Nathaniel's playing defense out there. He's playing really good. He has a lot of good open field tackles on defense and on special teams. First year that he's played football. And he is made a name for himself on special teams. He's getting some reps on the defensive side of the ball. Get to the running back, running right side, has the first down and then some. He's across the 20-yard line before he's thrown down. So Forest City into the red zone. <coughs> that is Courtney Austin. 117 on the clock. It stops so they can move the chains. Nettleton up 34 to 14. Forest City, you got to respect the fact that they are not rolling over and quitting. They're still battling here to the very end. Give to Austin once again. And that is Tyler Craig who grabs a hold of his foot, keeps him from advancing the ball any further. He did get a gain of three. It's going to be second down and seven. Less than a minute to play. 54 seconds. On the clock here, Nettleton up 34 to 14. Forest City trying to score before the horn sounds. Make the final score a little more respectable. Pass complete to, to Washington in the flats. He is tackled there at the, about the eight yard line. It's gonna be a first down. It'll be first down and goal to go for the Mustangs with 31 seconds remaining. Nettleton with a 34 to 14 lead. And Forest City, you think they're not playing hard even though it's, they're losing by 20. They're taking a timeout right here. So we will take a 30 second break with them. We come back, we'll have more Raider football on NTV and EAB Sports Network. Don't let your credit stop you from getting your next vehicle. Drive your deal to the max and deal are financing you. Automax of Jonesboro. Hi folks, Craig Stone here. If you need to upgrade your ride, don't worry about your pass. Come to Automax. At Automax, we have financing to fit your budget with affordable monthly payments and low down payments. Give us a call at 870-934-9200 or speed up your approval by applying online at AutomaxJonesboro.com. And hey, we buy cars too, even if you don't buy ours. So if you're looking to buy new, give us a chance to buy yours and ensure you get the most out of your trading. Automax, financing you. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. We have a final from Valley View. Valley View has defeated Southside 21 to 14. Right here, Nettleton has a 34 to 14 lead over the Forest City Mustangs. Quarterback keeper rolling left side, 
Good open field tackle over there by the Raiders. I believe that was Nathaniel Gonzalez who made the stop. Is that right, Jacob? I saw Derek Island. Derek Island, okay, Derek Island making the stop. And you have better eyes than I do, and I have the window here that stopped my view. So good job by Derek Island, the June bug, with a touchdown saving tackle. 23 seconds remaining. It's going to be second down and goal to go from the seven. Nettleton up 34 to 14. These Mustangs, they are not quitting. You got to tip your hat to them for that. Pass is complete out in the right flats, and it's going to be a touchdown. And that's a good pass by uh, Dalen Washington, and he hit Roshad Washington. Good job by both of the Washingtons to find the end zone here at Raider Field. Good job, Forest City. Touchdown with 22.6 seconds on the, the clock. Makes the score 34 to 20. And they're going to go for two. The Washingtons connected on that touchdown. It gives its number three. Trying for a two-point conversion. He has stopped short. He is hit hard by Nathaniel Gonzalez. Nathaniel Gonzalez with the stop, and that keeps the score at 34 to 20 with 22 seconds remaining. We'll take a 30-second break, and we'll have the conclusion of this game when we come back. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. So fast, and so has the Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic. This is our clinic's 10th year of creating healthier tomorrows for the kids in Northeast Arkansas. There's no need to cross the river or hit the highway for your cardiology or diabetes needs. Road trips are for fun, not for health care. The team at Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic is celebrating by doing what we always do, giving your kids more time to be kids. Learn more at archildrens.org slash Jonesboro. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. 22 seconds remaining in this game. Nettleton with a 34 to 20 lead. Nettleton will move to seven and one on the season. Forest City will drop to one and seven. Do want to say once again, shout out to Forest City. They have played a good football game from start to finish. And I do mean finish, they just, had the ball with about two minutes remaining and they drove down and scored. Called a timeout with about 30 seconds remaining and they have uh, definitely come to play here tonight and I got great respect for that. And uh, a year when they've not had much success, these young men are still playing. There's an awful lot of pride, a lot of Mustang pride among these young men out here from Forest City. And everybody who is watching from Forest City should be very proud of your football team tonight. They have come in and They've impressed this old Nettleton Raider, that's for sure. Forest City has always played Nettleton tough. Historically, they have beaten us more than we've beaten them. Uh, with tonight's victory, it'll move to 7-7 seven and seven on the all-time series. But uh, this Mustang team has really played hard. The kick is deep. It rolls into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Clock doesn't even start, so it'll be 22 seconds remaining. Nettleton should get into victory formation, take one snap, and then that should be all that all that she wrote for this game. Nettleton led 13 to nothing after the end of the first quarter. At half, they led 27 to six. At the end of the third quarter, it was 27 to 14 as Forest City scored eight un unanswered points. And here in the in the, sec in the fourth quarter, Nettleton has outscored them seven to six. 34 to 20, the score. Nettleton in the victory formation, they take the knee and the clock will hit zero. And Nettleton will win this game by the score of 34 to 20. So we will take a five minute break. And when we come back, we will have the post-game show presented by More Air Conditioning. Hey, make sure you tune in to the Ticket Radio Network Tuesdays at 5 as they present the More Air Conditioning Offensive Lineman of the Week. That's right. More is rewarding the guys in the trenches all year long. It's the More Air Conditioning Offensive Lineman of the Week. Tuesdays at 5 on the Ticket Radio Network. We're going to name the JOSM player of the game. 
Brought to you by Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Getting you back in the game for more than 40 years is coming up on the Moore Air Conditioning Post Game Show after this five minute break. Raiders win this one 34 to 20. Back in five minutes with the post game show on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Have you had to pay for costly repairs to your AC unit all summer long? More Air Conditioning will give you a trade-in value or buy back a recent repair up to $1,000. Plus, we have financing available and lifetime replacement warranties on new systems. But hurry before the new government regulations take effect. Call More Air Conditioning today, a Google Guaranteed Company at 870-336-2023. Or visit us at moreac.com. You deserve more, don't say. The home team at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is proud to welcome Dr. Asa Schneichel. Dr. Schneichel is an A State alum and is Northeast Arkansas's only joint revision surgeon, specializing in several forms of joint replacement. He joins the Jonesboro Sports and Orthopedics team with more than 40 years' experience in getting you back in the game. So if you have a sports injury, just some nagging aches, or even need help with concussion management, call JOSM at 932 1820 to schedule an appointment. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in our field so you can excel on yours. Ship anything, anywhere at your number one shipping source, Pack Mail in Jonesboro. Bring anything to Pack Mail, and they'll pack it, ship it, crate it, freight it, no matter how big, fragile, or awkwardly shaped. Since 1998, Pack Mail has been your number one shipping source, the only authorized shipper of all the major carriers. UPS, FedEx, DHL, the Postal Service, and freight services, all in one store. At Pack Mail, you have choices. Here's Pack Mail Tim to tell us more. Trey, we are the experts at finding solutions for even the most demanding shipping situations. And our experienced staff can help you choose the best option. So if you need to go to the post office, then FedEx, or all the way out to UPS Terminal, and then get that international shipment to DHL, you can do it all in one fast, convenient, and friendly place. Pack Mail. See, I told you, Pack Mail ships anything, anywhere, through any shipper. Pack Mail. Voted the number one printing, packaging, and shipping store in Jonesboro. Don't trust your shipping needs to just anybody. Trust Pack Mail. 361 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro. Ship anything, anywhere, today at Pack Mail. Evolve. Bank & Trust is now bringing full-service banking to Jonesboro. To celebrate, we're offering you $200 extra. Just open a new checking account with Evolve. Have at least two qualifying direct deposits of $500 or more within 90 days. Then we'll deposit $200 extra into your account. It's just that easy. Open a new Evolve checking account and receive an extra $200 in your account, plus free checks for a year. Restrictions apply. Visit getevolved.com slash special promotion for more details. Or come in and see us at 111 East Huntington Avenue, Suite A. Or call us at 870-933-2480. That's 870-933-2480. Evolve Bank and Trust. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Put your daily office routines in the hands of people you can trust. Forest Office Machines, your authorized sharp document systems dealer in Jonesboro. That's right, since 1965, Forest Office Machines has provided dependable office equipment and reliable service. We follow the equipment journey through all kinds of changes and developments, always on the cutting edge, whatever that is. And our partnership with sharp document systems means we offer the very latest, most dependable equipment. And Forest is the only office equipment dealer that when you need supply, You can walk in our store and get it. And when you need it fixed, you can call us. This is Barry Forrest. My family's been taking care of equipment needs of businesses just like yours since 1965. I would love to work for you today. Put your daily office routines in the hands of people you can trust. Forest Office Machines, your authorized Sharp Document System dealer at 1005 G Street in Jonesboro, 932-7852. 932-7852. Call Forest Office Machines today. It's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino's stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twists, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole gang. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Follow me on a new healthcare journey. 
full of possibilities. Experience world-class care delivered by friends, family, and neighbors right here in your community, bringing industry-leading technology to you, not the other way around. Your health record, your appointment scheduling, and your medications all in one place, and your lab results delivered the instant they're recorded. Do we look at healthcare differently? Absolutely. Experience the difference and you will too. NEA Baptist, healthcare for the next century. You're listening to the Nettleton Raiders on Bob FM, 1013 KIYS HD2, Walnut Ridge, Jonesboro, KIYS HD2, K231BB, College City, Jonesboro, KIYS HD4, Walnut Ridge, Jonesboro, and KIYS HD4, K267AS, Pigott. And we welcome you to the post-game show presented by Moore Air Conditioning. Again, make sure you check out the Moore Air Conditioning Offensive Lineman of the Week. The uh, Moore Air Conditioning crew is rewarding the guys in the trenches all year long. It's the Moore Air Conditioning Offensive Lineman of the Week. Tuesdays at 5 on the Ticket Radio Network. And we appreciate more air conditioning sponsoring the post-game show. Nettleton wins this one by the score of 34 to 20. Nettleton led 13 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. A Maddox Hampton to Curtis Smith touchdown pass, and then a Curtis Smith touchdown run. The first PAT was no good. The second one was good. That made it 13 to zero. They outscored Forest City 14 to six in the second quarter. A Maddox Hampton. Touchdown pass to a young man who's playing football for the first time this year. Scored his first touchdown, Adarian Blackburn, A.D. Blackburn. That made the score 20 to nothing after the Joseph Newhung PAT. Forest City then got on the board, however, with a touchdown pass from Daquan Scott to Rashad Washington. Made the score 20 to 6. The two-point conversion is was no good. Nettleton... Uh, responded with a touchdown right before half, a touchdown pass to the King, Braylon King. It's good to be the King. Uh, Maddox Hampton hit him with a four-yard touchdown pass with 33 seconds remaining, made the score 27-6 to after the Joseph Newhung PAT. At half, Nettleton led 27-6. to The third quarter, Forest City outscored Nettleton 8-0 to in the third quarter, a 58-yard run by number 29, Willie Murphy, with 3.51 remaining in the third quarter, made the score 27-14. to The fourth quarter rolled around with 3.08 remaining in the fourth quarter. Nettleton scored on a Curtis Smith three-yard touchdown run. That made the score 34-14 to with 3.08 remaining. You would have thought Forest City would just roll over and, and uh, accept defeat, but those Mustangs, they kept on battling. They put together a drive, and that made a touchdown drive that lasted uh, just about three minutes with 22 seconds in the game, a seven-yard touchdown pass from Dalen Washington to Rashad Washington made the score 34-20. to The two-point conversion was no good. They were 0-3 for 3 on the night in two-point conversion, so that set the final score at – 34 to 20. So Nettleton moves to 7 and 1 on the season. Here's some stats for the game. The quarterback, the Mad Dog, Maddox Hampton, had 124 yards passing. The Mad Dog didn't run the ball tonight, so that's the only offensive stats that we have for the Mad Dog 124 yards passing. Um, he also threw for uh, three touchdowns, and so a good night for the Mad Dog. Braylon King had four receiving yards, one touchdown. Keandre Pope had a big night, 130 yards rushing. And uh, Pope, unfortunately, uh, was um, knocked out of the game, um, and we believe with a um, – concussion as it looked like the way that they were treating him and he looked like he was knocked unconscious so um, Keandre we're hoping to get some kind of word how Keandre is doing he walked off the field under his own power which is wonderful but he did not come back into the game but a good game for Keandre he had 130 yards 97 of which came in the first half Curtis Smith had a big night, three touchdowns, 67 rushing yards, 76 receiving yards, and Curtis with a huge night. Um, also for Nettleton, Q Thompson, 33 receiving yards. 
Um, A.D. Blackburn, 11 receiving yards and a touchdown. And Kylan Shelton comes in, 22, uh, number 22. is That's his uh, what he wears on his jersey. He had 50 yards rushing. We want to say congratulations to the JOSM Player of the Game brought to you by Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, getting you back in the game for more than 40 years. The Player of the Game is Curtez Smith. Curtez uh, with three touchdowns on the night. He's got 21 touchdowns on the season. And, Jacob, I think you'd agree with me, the playmaker, a worthy recipient of the player of the game tonight. He sure is. And we throw his name in the conversation almost every Friday night because he plays good every Friday night. I mean, we played eight games, and he has 21 touchdowns. If my math is correct, that's close to – three touchdowns a game, probably two and a half. It's two and some percentage points. He scores over two touchdowns a game. There's a reason that we have given him the moniker, the playmaker. He makes plays. Passing, running, receiving, Curtis Smith. He is a heck of a football player. I'm glad he's playing for the black and gold. I'm glad he's playing for the Raiders. I'm glad that the Raiders got the win tonight. They moved to 7-1 and one on the season. And next week we will be traveling to Valley View. The uh, Blazers defeated Southside tonight 21-14. to Those Southside Southerners, man, they're a tough football team for sure. They gave Valley View a good game tonight. And next week it's going to be Nettleton versus Valley View at Blazer Field. Raider Faithful, we need you to be there. Uh, we need a large crowd of Raider fans. And as, as we take on Valley View, who sits number one in conference, they are undefeated in conference. They're not undefeated overall, but they are undefeated in conference. They're 7-1 and one on the season. We're seven and one on the season. They're four and zero oh in conference. Or they should be five and zero oh actually in conference, if I, I believe that's right. Yeah, five and zero oh in conference, and we are uh, four and one in conference. We defeat them next week, then uh, we will be um, tied for first in conference. We defeat Win the next week. We're the outright conference champs. We're in a situation right now where we uh, we. Our, our destiny is in our own hands, and that's good news, Raider Nation. So we'll sign off here at Raider Field. Nettleton wins at 34 to 20. Hats off to Forest City for a very hard-fought game. They really uh, showed a lot of improvement this season, and, and they played hard tonight to the very end. But the Raiders able to get the win 34 to 20. Big game next Friday. Looking forward to bringing that to you. And so glad that you were able to tune us in tonight. I want to say thanks to Scotty Woodson, who's uh, producing the, the show, and James Lowry, who produced uh, much of the game at the EAB um, studios. Thanks to those guys for an excellent production job. Thanks to Jacob Linderman, my tag team partner. Thanks to Cameron Holder who did the directing tonight on our live stream. Cameron did a great job, as he always does. The Calebs, Caleb Andrews, our down camera operator. Caleb Robinson, our up camera operator. And Brandon Troutman, our up camera operator as well. We appreciate all of those guys. The NTV crew, they're the ones who make it possible for you to watch the game on YouTube. So great win for the Raiders tonight. They move to 7-1 and one on the season. Sets up a big showdown, a crosstown showdown next week in Valley View. Hope that you can be there. For all of us here at Nettleton, I'm Craig Miller signing off saying good night, everybody. Raider Pride is justified. Raider Pride forever. <laughs>